All right. Whoops. We're bringing the microphone over, wouldn't it? Yep. Hello, 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 hello. Yes. Uh, I was actually going to go live last night. Uh, I was supposed to go live with Dave. Uh, we had it set up to for me to go on about 10 p.m. my time, uh, but uh, he uh, never made contact, so I didn't end up going live last night. Uh, so uh, I put it off till today, and I wanted to get started at about 11 o'clock this morning. However, uh, we had some issues with uh, StreamYard, and it did not just affect me. It affected everybody trying to set up streams uh, doing uh, during uh, uh, this morning's period of time. And it was, it was primarily just YouTube uh, that was stopping people from being able to uh, set up streams. So, but they got the issue taken care of, and so we were able to uh, get things going, uh, get things set up, um, you know, accordingly. So, all right, um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into things again today. Um, not going to give you a whole lot of banter right off the bat here because um, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm not all with it at this moment. Um, just uh, getting old and getting tired and um a whole bunch of other stuff too so um i'm gonna do my scrolling down to the bottom of my uh selected uh things that i want to show you guys and uh before i flip it on that way there you're not watching me scroll 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 um while uh your eyes are like what the hell is he trying to show us and i want to see that one and don't worry you're gonna see them all i i believe me, you're gonna see them all um, so, uh, yeah, so we've had a couple of days of, uh, uh, of quiet, um, and, um, and I, I kind of needed it. Um, yesterday I took the entire day and, uh, pretty much, uh, I got a bunch of stuff done around the house. Um, or I, I the house. Yeah, right. A 14 by 20 building is not a house. Um, but it is a home for now, for now. Um, it's doing its job and that's what, uh, I guess that's what matters the most, right? So, but we're going to be covering a lot of different things, um, and there is a lot of it. Um, I'm just trying to get to the beginning of it uh, before I pull it up on the up on the screen. Um, there, there were some things that were pointed out in regards to uh, Eclipse Day, uh, things that were uh, that were seen, um, and um, we're going to cover that along with a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, let's see, where is, I gotta be getting close to the beginning of this now. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yo, yo, come on, give me some space here. You don't need to be sitting on my feet like that, thank you. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. One of them I know I definitely cannot play for you because of the fact that, um, it is uh, would get me a copyright right off the bat. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I want to make sure I cover this guy. Okay. I think I'm getting there. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely getting close. Definitely getting close to the beginning of my of my list. Probably half of these things you guys have probably already seen on your own as it is, but we'll find out. Um, and I believe that that is the beginning right there. Is it? Is that it? Nope. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, so let me get the share screen up. Get my camera turned off. There we go. Get that out of the way. And get that turned off. Screen back. Okay, insurrection. Barbie says the next generation is going to come out swinging. She destroys the left about presidential immunity. Here we go.
just want to make sure that I got this right because I feel like you guys just aren't getting the bigger picture. Um, the whole presidential immunity when it comes to Donald Trump. Donald Trump has no presidential immunity because he incited an insurrection and he used violent rhetoric. Okay, so he has no presidential immunity, he gets charged. What does that mean? That means that the people who were never president and were saying hateful rhetoric and hateful shit on the news, be they congressman or a journalist, also gets to be tried for their hateful rhetoric, right? People like this? I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. When they go low, we kick. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? The biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right, not to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. And, you would have uh, been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. And that's a fact. Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A Missouri state senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> right-wing Americans who say it's all about keeping America, keeping America's independent and safe. If you want to fight against the country, you need an F-15. You need a, something a little more than a gun. No, I'm not joking. Think about this. Think about the rationale we use. That's you. Now, let's be clear here. You saw Joe Biden in there calling for violence. You saw Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi. You saw news journalists calling for violence. We don't have free speech in this country anymore unless it's a Democrat narrative, because I guarantee you, well, it's not the same as going to be in my comments, because it is. You can watch Donald Trump's whole entire speech in its entirety on his ex account. It's still up there to this day. It's still up. You can't hide it. You can't try to flip it and switch it to fit your fucking narrative. It's there. All anybody has to do is watch the thing in its entirety, not the snippets that you take out to paint him as some evil, terrible dictator, horrible, fascist person. Sorry, it doesn't work with those of us that have critical thinking skills. We watch the thing in its entirety, everything. But back to the presidential immunity. If Donald Trump has no presidential immunity simply for saying something that someone doesn't agree with because of their political beliefs, then that means that way crazier shit, like, I don't know, Obama leaving soldiers to die in Benghazi, gets to be prosecuted and tried. People like, I don't know, George Bush, who sent millions of Americans over to die in Afghanistan and Iraq over weapons of mass destruction, which didn't fucking exist, and it was actually over oil, gets to be charged and tried. That also means that Bill Clinton, who had a sex scandal with Monica Lewinsky, gets to be tried and prosecuted. That also means that your precious, precious Joe Biden gets to be charged and tried for every single death at the hands of these illegal immigrants because of his failed border policies. And you are not going to sit there and argue with me on that. This man single-handedly cut down every policy that Donald Trump had to keep this country safe and keep our borders secure. His first day in, cut everything and invited everybody to come on in there telling them, oh, we'll help you. We'll help you pay for your American dream at the expense of U.S. taxpayer dollars. All of those deaths are on Joe Biden's hands, which means once he gets out of office, he can be tried because, well, presidential immunity doesn't exist, right? You don't get to have one side of the coin. It's, it's both sides. So either there is presidential immunity or there isn't. You don't get to pick and choose just because you've been told to hate this man.
Wake the fuck up. Yep. She telling the truth. They hate it when the truth comes out. So, finally, New Yorkers have had enough. A group of men defends a woman who got punched by some crazy thug. Yep, they're just not having it no more. That boy is out cold. They're all over checking on the woman. And he's still out cold. And here comes the cops. Are they going to do anything? Yeah, they'll probably arrest the woman for being <laughs> for, for being the one attacked. Or or they're going to help this guy, you know, take him to the hospital, get him some free uh free free uh um uh medical care and and then just let him loose on the street afterwards. Yeah. It'd have been nice if they'd have done some commentary to that, but they didn't. So we just got to kind of deal with it. All right. Uh, this guy, you know, he puts out a lot of great content. You know, he really does. Um, what is going on with grading scale in California? Um, and this is the older millennial dot one um, is uh, what he goes by. Here we go. All right. So we have to talk about this. If you're unaware, this is the public school grading scale in California. And this is fucking insane. So according to the grading scale they're using today, 84 to 100 is an A, 64 to 84 is a B, 44 to 64 is a C, 24 to 44 is a D, and anything below 24% is a fail. And if this is how we're going to grade children today, let's just fucking sell everything to China. Because we're fucked as a society. So I don't know about you, but as my name says, I'm an older millennial. I was born in 83 and graduated high school in 02. And when I went to school, this was my grading scale. The fact this looks like it was on fucking parchment does not help my complex about being old. But regardless, let's look at the fucking difference. So to get an A, I needed a 95 to 100. B was 88 to 94. C was 80 to 87. D was 70 to 79. 69 and below was failing. So let's be real. That means the only people that would be passing for my time is the people who are currently getting an A and about half the people who are getting a B. The other half of B, as well as everyone else, would have failed. And for me, on this scale, C is where it gets ridiculous. There are plenty of people out there in my time who were just C-level students. They weren't especially smart, but they also weren't especially dumb. So for me, C was always just the average people. I figured that the average people were able to answer about 80% of the shit they learned correctly. But now you can get more wrong than you do right and still have a C. But you have to think, that's what 44% means. That means that of all the questions you were given, you got 56% of them wrong. You got more wrong than you did right, and you're still a C student. That is fucking stupid. And D is even worse, because getting a D in California means that you got 76% of everything wrong, and you're still going to graduate. You have to get 77% of everything wrong to fail. Here's the thing, I don't ever wanna work with someone who got 77% of everything wrong. I don't even want to work with somebody who got 56% of everything wrong. Right now in California, these motherfuckers are graduating high school. This is the future generations of our society. We are going to have a generation of people in this country who are graduating high school and college while getting 75% of everything wrong. And that is fucking horrifying. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, Sir Oliver Pollack uh, says, uh, President Trump on truth, we've won. The reeling Democrats have nothing else besides the abortion issue. We went from winning bigly to we've won, destroyed their plan, and implemented a new one, one controlled by patriots, the silent war. You know the Democrats are reeling when they have no response to my recent statement on abortion, other than he's only kidding. He will change it 
or he won't do that. He'll do something else. I guess this means that we've won because they are so bad on everything else that this is the only issue they are focused on. And then Q drop number 12 says military intelligence reference above is the absolute biggest inside drop this board will ever receive. Think about why Antifa plays right into the plan. Always ahead. Good guys are winning. And then it shows the plan. Today, Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there was a, an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgate, promulgated, uh, that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will pledge with the world leaders to deliver them from this. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly re relinquished for their guarantee of their well-being granted to them by their world government. Henry Kissinger, in an address to the Bilderberg meeting at Evian, France, uh, May 21st, 1992. The plan today, Americans would be outraged if UN troops uh, is, the, is the photo and the silent war continues. All right, moving on. Uh, thank you, at Paris Hilton. I knew you'd get it done. Well, this is the thing. This isn't Paris Hilton. That's not Paris Hilton. It's not. It's not her. We've seen that girl too many times over the last 15, you know, 15 years. Uh, this is definitely not Paris Hilton, but let's listen. Hey, everyone. I have some great news and update from Jamaica. Five of the employees from Atlantis Leadership Academy have been arrested for abusing children. I hope this really sets a precedent that if abuse happens, arrests <coughs> will be made. Unfortunately, Randy Cook, the owner, has not been held accountable yet. But yet, I just want to say thank you to everyone for helping me raise awareness on this really important situation. It just means so much to myself, to the survivor community, and the boys in Jamaica. We are all so grateful to everyone for caring and talking about it, and all of it helps. And just to see that real change can be made. And I really hope this is a lesson to people out there, that if you are abusing children, I will find out. I will find you. I will come with my huge spotlight and shine it on wherever you are because people are not going to get away with this anymore. Enough is enough and it has to stop. And I hope you all know we have a, a huge community out there and survivors, we believe you. I know from personal experience of being in these places, and how they operate. I've spoken to thousands of survivors. Everyone has the same story. This needs to stop. This has been happening for decades and people are just getting away with it. Not anymore. Yeah, but that's definitely not Paris Hilton. Doesn't even sound like her. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is uh, on the Powerball. <laughs> oh, boy. Something's definitely going on with the Powerball. And now I have proof. Yesterday, I made a video questioning the irregularities of the recent Powerball drawing, how it got delayed for three hours before one person won it. While it's getting even more ridiculously odd now, new information sent via a follower. 11 p.m. Powerball drawing is scheduled as normal. But it was delayed three hours due to a two-tiered verification process error in Minnesota. Three hours. 4.59 a.m. Idaho time. A store clerk that sells lotto tickets checks the numbers in their lottery system. See here. Clearly states jackpot won in seven states. 7.25. She checks again. Now it says jackpot won in four states. Arizona, Delaware, Florida, and Iowa. Fast forward to the morning news. All of a sudden, one winner is announced in Oregon. How is this possible? Go from seven winners to four to one. They even originally had the winning states. But all of a sudden, some random person in Oregon wins? 
coincidental mistakes in reporting on the same drawing that there is an unexpected delay. Why doesn't the mainstream media cover this? Yep. They're rigging the Powerball, no different than they rigged the basketball games, baseball games, football games, everything else. Yep. And yes, I said basketball. Basketball games are rigged too. You know, you got to think about uh, gambling and association to, you know, those bets. The, the owners of the teams are making bank on people banking on their teams. Yeah. So here's another. Yeah. Walk up to me. I swear I'm going to knock the fuck out of you. I'm a black lesbian. Walk up on me if you want to. I can walk wherever. Walk up on me if you want to. You are a hateful son of a bitch. All of you. And whatever church you go to, fuck off in their bedroom. How much fuck you spend you. on the Sharpie? I spent a whole bunch of money to come out here and harass the fuck out of your dirty That's ass. your black privilege. Yes, it is my black privilege, you white piece of shit. You're racist. I am, very much so. Yeah. You are a colonizer. So I guess we have something in common. Anything else? You colonizing piece of shit? I'm a black if lesbian. you walk up to me, I swear I'm going to knock the fuck out of you. Well, um, I think that's some uh, hooker corner. Uh, I'd say hookers, hookers corner. Uh, uh, you know, um, yeah, anger issues going on there. Maybe, maybe some anger management would be good. Um, you know, um, you know, you just, just, you just never know. You just never, ever, ever know. You know, this is the thing. You know, there are going to always be those people who could care less about the color of anybody's skin. It's the content of their character. You know. That was a, you know, a statement made by by um, uh, Martin Luther King years ago. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, he, he dreams of a day when when a man will be judged by content of his character instead of the color of his skin. You know, um, well, the thing is, is that uh, uh, these people are going exactly against everything that that Dr. King said um, because they're, you know, they're the ones showing the true intended racism um and uh you know uh it's it's just uh it's difficult to understand why people put themselves in this position um you know uh with with these types of emotion because of the fact that you know a you know we just all want to get along and and live a, a good life um seek that american dream you know, but we want everybody to be able to succeed and, and to be able to move forward in life. And unfortunately, we've got those people who uh, had just have so much hate in their heart that, uh, you know, that they go out on the street corner and, and have to share it with the world because, you know, hate, hate, hates being confined to one place. So you got to take it out to the public. You got to, you know, uh, manifest that upon, you know, the masses of people. Um, and, um, you know, they're not going to, uh, be happy about, uh, anything until, uh, until you're as, uh, upset, worried, scared, uh, angry and hateful as they are, you know, it's a real shame, you know, all right, let's see what Ozzy's got to say. The Osbournes. All I have to say is that Sean is it's not my world. I don't understand any of that world. I don't pretend that I do. But well, I don't think this is a necessarily a hip hop related issue. No, he lives in a total issue. different world. I don't know what he does. Sure, but you've also been in a position to see entertainers, famous people taking advantage of young girls. You've seen it. Yeah. So to say that you know nothing about it, I think is a is a in. in no. Think about accurate. his case, Mom should say. Yeah. Ultimately, it comes down to this. Guilty people run. That's Ozzy's own kids speaking All up. All I have. Yeah. You know. Yep.
they said. All right. Let it rip, Tater Chip. Thoughts? Here we go. Things that we are absolutely flabbergasted that people still believe in 2024. The moon landing was real, and it was the first time we went. That Michelle Obama is still allowed to use the ladies' restroom. That the news is a reliable source of information, and you should always watch them to know what is actually happening, you know? That professional sports aren't rigged. That 5G towers are just for Wi-Fi. We see that Beyond Meat is actually a healthier choice than a Rio burger. That they're doing everything they can to find the cure. <laughs> that the taxes you pay literally go to the government to build better roads and infrastructures. <laughs> it's for the schools. Anything for kids, right? Oh, God. The history you study in school hmm? is what really went down. Yeah. You should believe hmm. it with every cell in your body. No. You know when you go voting and you put your vote in? Yeah. To actually think that it's it... It's my right to vote. Fair enough. But to think that your, your vote actually matters. That the writers for Simpsons are just really good psychics. They're pretty good. Brushing your teeth twice a day with fluoride is actually good for your teeth. Aliens have never been here. We're still waiting. Wearing a mask that it's actually protecting you at all costs. But it is, what do you mean? We have only discovered 5% of the oceans. Maybe six? <laughs> Get it the fuck together, man. <laughs> hey, that you, you need, need glasses, glasses to look, look at, at the eclipse. eclipse. Yep. And you can win the Powerball, too, if you belong to their crew. Yeah. Because, see, the, the lottery winners get to declare privacy as well as the Powerball companies, okay, or the, the uh, associate, associations, whatever the hell they are. Um, they're, they're just a big ripoff. They're a big scam. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, is there anything that's not rigged? I mean, I'm serious. Is there anything that is not rigged? Anything. All right. Be not afraid. When I was in psychological operations in the Army in 2003, it was illegal to run psychological operations on the American people. Well, Obama changed that in 2014. Now it's perfectly legal to run PSYOP on the American people. You are living in a multifaceted psychological operations exercise on every front. I want you to ask yourself when you're being told information like Bill Gates says there's going to be a surprise outbreak or Fauci says there's going to be this or that or vials of smallpox are suddenly found and you get to know about it. Why? Why do you get to know about it? Because of setting up a narrative. What is that narrative? What does the narrative gain? Everything in these operations are designed to make you afraid so that you do what the powers that be want you to do, okay? Win the hearts and minds of the people, okay? And that's done with fear. So stop being afraid. You do not fear men. Your soul is eternal. Stop being afraid and stand up. Yeah. Stop being afraid. Yep, total cram it up. It's a big club and you ain't in it. I just got to kill the music on this. So watch her net worth as the time goes by here. Watch her net worth. 2010, $31.1 million. 2012, $46.9 million. 2014, $59.1 million. 2016, $68.1 million. 2018, $79.5 million. 2019, 
85.8 million. 2020, 99.5. 2022, $120.8 million. 2024, $140 million. Yeah. But hey, the system's fair. You know? The system's fair. Yeah. Um, yes, Richard, I got it yesterday. Yes, thank you very much. And I'm um, taking care of the other end of that uh, over the next couple of days. Uh, all right. Oops. Ill Donald Old Trump Bowl says, Fuck you, Joe Biden, you cock sucking motherfucker. Whoops. Fuck Joe Biden. 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 <laughs> People are tired of it. They're absolutely tired of it. Come on, man. I'm doing a show. <laughs> Wait till after I'm done with this show before you start sending me crazy shit. All right. <laughs> oh, Stephen, Second Amendment, God, family, country. Yeah, exactly. 100% right on the money. What we need is an Elliot Ness style police force to arrest criminals and a hanging judge like Isaac Parker to put them away for good. But not let's not or no, but no, let's arrest law abiding citizens instead. Freaking morons. Yep. Let's take a listen. It's important. Let's talk about how America is number three out of 193 countries for gun violence. That's a fact, a sad but true fact. Out of 193 countries, we rank number three for gun violence. But did you also know it's a fact that if you take out the top five cities that have the most gun violence in America, we fall to 189th on that same list. Those five cities, by the way, have some of the most liberal leadership in the country. Those same five cities have the most prohibited and restrictive gun laws that there are. Those five cities have tried to legislate, they have tried to mandate, they have tried to remove these, but yet they lead our country as the most violent. It's a fact. Out of 193 countries, America ranks number three in gun crime. If you remove the top five liberal, most restrictive cities on gun control there are, we fall to 189th. You're telling me we need more laws? Wake up, America. Facts matter. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right. Here's the solar eclipse party from Philadelphia. Wow, what a party that is, huh? Yep, okay. I'm going to be playing a, flu a few clips from this guy, and I want you guys just to listen to his story and what he's going to tell you. All right, pay close attention. Um, like I said, there's going to be a couple of clips throughout today's uh, podcast that I'll be showing of these. Um, here we go. And I'm a Department of Defense firefighter and whistleblower of the largest terrorist attack since 9-11, the Camp Spiker Massacre, against Halliburton, Kellogg, Brown, and Root, an American international group, their insurer, AIG legal representation, Mick Thomas at Thomas Quinn Law, phone number 145-546-6100. He is requested to set trial for the Camp Spiker Massacre and Open Defense Base Act cases that contain Key Tam 418 CV 04230 SLDJEH as evidence. As Kellogg Brown and Roots fraud against the United States military is what caused injuries and senseless life loss. Amal Clooney and Nadia Murad, they have prosecuted ISIS for genocide in Frankfurt, Germany, validating all the casework. My day in court was unconstitutionally remanded March 9th. 2020, and I have patiently been waiting trials since. 
This is a recording of Mick Thomas, again, of Thomas Quinn Law, acknowledging the Camp Spiker Massacre, as well with Defense Base Act lawyer Thomas Barnes, both from Houston, Texas. I mean, they're, they're recommending growing my bones together in my ankle or cutting my leg off. And I'd, I'd like to have an expert weigh in on that. Kelly, if I could address that. Please. So this has been, this is, this has been the issue that's been on for a long time. One, uh, so the, the, the psychiatric IME, mean, um, Dr. Dye, that was actually done for this very reason to find out if psych psychologically surgery was a good idea. His answer was no. I don't know any psychologist or psychiatrist that said that, that Mr. Knudsen should have surgery. Years of my life, like, and I don't even understand what for at this point, but where, where I'm getting frustrated, where I'm getting frustrated, if I may. You don't understand what, why you've had to go through this. The reason you went through this is because, like you put in here, you signed a contract to go over there and put yourself in a war zone. It happened. There's a massacre. Very tragic. You've been injured, understandably, and now it's time to move on. We, we can't answer questions of why it happened or why you had to go through this. Those are philosophical in nature, and, that, and I can't go there. You know that. Excuse me, excuses, that's, come on, excuses is insulting, like, you don't, you don't need to say excuses at this point, like, I, I, I do want you guys to come, and I do want you guys to negotiate a number, but I'm, I, I don't need that right now, to be honest, and you guys do have Nick Thomas, their representation, saying that surgery is withheld because of the IMEs, the same ones that neglect the Camp Spiker Massacre. You know how many times you've written that in an yeah, well, it it pertains to my it, it pertains to my parenting case. It, it goes hand in hand with my parenting case. I get it doesn't matter to you. It does to me. And I'm not I'm not asking you to like ask them for an apology. They're saying I'm too crazy to get surgery. How, how do you think that makes how do you think that makes my son's mother feel? Excuse me, excuse me. How do you think that makes my son's mother feel? Probably not too good. Like she needs to get the child out of there. Well, you saying that they're not related is you're you're kind of overstepping some stuff right here, sir. So that was a recording of AIG legal representation, Mick Thomas in Thomas Barnes. Um, I was injured in Iraq in 2014. American International Group, they have cut off my left heel and have refused to do surgery since. Then they withheld a 1,700-person massacre. What happened was that KBR and AIG, they embezzled the U.S. taxpayer dollars for defenses Instead of delivering them in time, they took the money and ran from a fight. Everybody on the project was brutally murdered, thrown in mass graves with their families enslaved. So where I know my casework has hit is that Amal Clooney prosecuted ISIS for genocide in Frankfurt, Germany. Instead of getting my day in court, they cut off my heel, told me that I was never in Iraq and I was actually in Afghanistan. I have the contract in Department of Labor. Um, that's actually what that recording is from. The, the Department of Labor report, report confirms that I was in Iraq in 2014. This is what's called a KETAM or a whistleblower case. And it has all the evidence. And for recording that, for recording the conversation with AIG's legal representation, for recording that here in Kitsap County, 
the district attorney, Chad Enright, who's a small town, small minded district attorney, Chad Enright, issued a warrant for my arrest for recording them acknowledge a 1700 person massacre, fraud against the United States military, treason, massacre, genocide, and the purpose of KTAM 418CV04230 SLDJEH is to return taxpayer funds and free women and children from ISIS. The offer that Thomas Barnes was talking about, it's right here. I think most people would do anything to get a payday like that. I told them I, I do not accept the offer, and that's from Thomas Barnes. I told them I'd rather have my day in court where I can honor my friend. Sacrifices. I want the mass graves exhumed. I want their bodies exhumed out of the Tigris River. And above anything, I want the funds returned for search and rescue to free their families from slavery as long as well alongside the Christians and Yazidis that are enslaved as well. I'm sorry, I, I still get a little worked up about a bunch of this because it's, it's unbelievable to me that the military contractors can disgrace the United States military this bad. That they can take the money, run from a fight, and commit treason. Texas will not condone stealing from the United States military. Instead of my community here in Kitsap County helping, they've endangered my son. They've belittled my friend's sacrifices. They denied my day in court. They deny civil rights. And then they fabricate charges for malicious prosecution. D.A. Chad Enright. requested to resign for his whistleblower retaliation and child endangerment on my son. I'm not going to speak about that, though, but I still get death threats on my little boy, and I will go protect him. I'm tired of Mick Thomas grandstanding. He needs to set trial for the Camp Spiker massacre immediately. So I'm taking to TikTok to document going back down to San Francisco to confront Mick Thomas and then going to Houston, Texas at the AIG Life Building. McThomas has his firm in San Francisco, but he's a graduate from the University of Houston in law. Everything seems to be based out of Houston, Texas. The representation on the key tam, Joel Androphy, he was based out of Houston, Texas as well. I was flown to Chicago. I was flown to Chicago. Taken in a back alley, went up a fire escape. And then sat in front of a panel of alleged FBI. And they told me that I need to self withdraw this case. Where no one can help you. And the date that they told me to withdraw this case was by my son's birthday. This was October 16th, 2019. So I ensured that I'm still going to get my day in court. I, I, I still haven't taken any offers. This is a open... active defense base act case the camp spiker massacre whistleblower case is submitted as evidence into the evidence into the open dba cases i submitted that I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, 
but it appears that they really do not want this guy's story out there. That before I withdrew anything. If they threaten my boy again, I'm going to go rush them. I, I need my community's help. I have a petition called Ban Combat Zone Profiteering. If I get enough signatures on that, then Chad Enright will no longer be able to deny my day in court. All I need is to read. All I need is my day in court. Then I read what U.S. comrade families, Christians, and Yazidis were sold for as sex slaves by ISIS. We're going to collect immediately on the largest whistleblower case in American history. And it's a goddamn shame Chad Enright can't honor oaths to God on the Soldier's Creed. It's fucked up that he condones fraud against the United States military and leaves my friend's families to be raped to death by ISIS. We're going to free these slaves no matter the cost. Two of... Ah, sorry. Thank you for your time and consideration. Please consider signing that petition. Um, thank you. Yep. They did not want me playing that video. All right. Dane says, hallelujah. White people are not our enemy. Why do I say that? Pound. White people don't come into our communities killing and raping family members. There we go. Now watch, this one's going to play just fine. Good morning. Today I want to touch on a topic which politicians, grandparents, and parents are indoctrinating our communities and our kids with. And that is that white people are our enemy. They are not. Why I say this? Look around. White people don't come into our communities killing and raping our family members. It's our own skill, skin color. Indian, black, and colored. White people don't come into our communities robbing us and intruding our houses and stealing us blind. It's our own skin color and our own race. White people don't come into our communities selling drugs, turning our kids into gangsters and our daughters into prostitutes. It's our own skin color. In fact, the ANC and these politicians like Malema and those guys wants us to believe by shouting, give back our land, that white people have the majority of the land. The ANC have done a study um, this year proving that they are wrong because white people only own 21% of, of this country's land. And those are the people who have farms. But 60% of the land of South Africa is owned by blacks. And the other percentage, 19%, belongs to Indians and coloreds. Again, they are wrong. But they want us to believe that white people have the majority of the land. Yes, you will say now that, yes, it's because of whites that we are doing all these wrong things. Why blame other people for your mistakes? What, that white lady sitting next to your child in school is not the, uh, the enemy. Who's playing sports with you is not your enemy. Your real enemy lives in your community with the same skin color. In fact, we as colored Indians and blacks go into white communities killing and raping and robbing them. They don't do it to us. So the real enemy stays and lives amongst us and has our own skin color. So stop believing what people are preaching here. <coughs> These politicians and your parents and grandparents that white people is your enemy. Our own enemy is amongst us. And we are poor because some of us are too lazy to work and to go study. And we blame everybody else. Take, take your hand and put it in your own bosom and decide for yourself whether you want to stay poor or get out of that community and educate yourself and, and find the right facts. Don't just go blind and follow blind people with a one mind trick, believe, making us believe that we are separate and segregated by skin color. White people is not your enemy. Your real enemy is your own skin color and your own kind. That's all I want to say. I think he makes a very valid point. You know, the largest majority of killing of black men in the, in the city of Chicago are done by other black men. Yeah. You know, what can you say? All right. Uh, well, actually, I should probably read this first. Uh, cold open. 
panic in D.C., the meltdown. Here we go. While Trump's 2016 agenda was frequently stymied by infighting and incompetence, available signs point to a second West Wing staffed by loyalists who would actually carry out his policies. President Trump knows who can deliver and who can't. The backstabbers who weren't around in 2016 won't be in the next White House. Trump's senior campaign advisor, Jason Miller, told me Trump's 2024 campaign has already demonstrated Trump can run an effective operation. This campaign is locked down, a Republican close to Trump said. Most of all, Trump is disciplined because fear is a powerful, powerful motivator. His wealth and freedom are at stake. He is terrified of going to jail, a longtime friend from New York told me. The criminal charges helped solve Trump's messaging problem. Prior to the indictments, Trump was a one-line artist singing a tired tune that the 2020 election was stolen. But the dozens of felony counts gave him new material. He cast himself as a political martyr being prosecuted by the Biden White House. He's so distracted with the legal stuff. That's why the campaign is smooth. The Republicans to Trump, close to Trump said, and Gabe, Mm -hmm. you know, he says out loud that he would be a dictator and that he is your retribution to his voters. He says a lot of the quiet part out loud, uh, loud, even the frightening part out loud. He also has a campaign construct Mm -hmm. that now has his daughter-in-law built in. There are a lot of different factors to this that didn't exist the first time around. That's right, Mika. And, you know, everyone here on the show has been covering Trump for years. And the big story in 2016 and to some extent 2020 was that his campaign was a soap opera. It was a, it was clashing personalities. It was nonstop drama. And covering this cycle, the thing that I've been struck by time and time again is that it's really a low drama campaign. These are operatives who are focused, who don't want press, who don't want their egos out there. They are focused on getting Donald Trump into the White House in November 2024, because as I write in the piece, his freedom is at stake. Really, the only thing that is guaranteed to keep Donald Trump out of jail is becoming the next president of the United States and appointing an attorney general who will get these charges thrown out. It's really that simple. And I think that is really why you see Donald Trump so focused. And yes, he says incendiary things on the stump. But when it comes to the mechanics of running the campaign, it is a much different operation. Highly confident that when you go back and, and is a, a senior member of this uh, uh, administration, President Trump's administration, starting in the afternoon of the 20th of January of 2025, uh, do you feel conf- confident that you will be able to deliver the goods that we can have serious prosecutions and accountability? And I want the morning show producers that watch us and all the producers that watch us this is just not rhetoric. We're absolutely dead serious. We're not. You, you cannot have a constitutional republic and allow what these uh, deep staters have done to the country. The deep state, the administrative state, the fourth branch of government never mentioned in the Constitution is going to be taken apart brick by brick. And the people that, that did these evil deeds will be held accountable and pro- prosecuted, criminal prosecutions. Let me ask you finally, how does the campaign interact with people like Steve Bannon and Cash Patel when they they go on podcasts and they say that they're that, that Trump is going to throw political opponents and reporters uh, in jail and he looks into the camera and says, and morning, Joe, we're looking at you. We're coming after you. You're basically you're going to jail. How does this button down campaign uh, respond to that? Well, I think they not only do they respond to it, Joe, I think they're encouraging it. You know, Jason Miller is, is close to Steve Bannon. Um, there's a whole network of, of people who have, while they're not officially part of the campaign, they have links to the campaign and they're using it through the MAGA media to get the ground, you know, to get the troops the MAGA foot soldiers all riled up. And, and, you know, I think we should, we've learned all uh, since the last cycle. Let's not, you know, pretend, take Trump at his word. I think the media, all mm-hmm. of us, 
Democratic Party, even the few Republicans who are anti-Trump, are, are sort of not paying attention. Just look at what they're saying. This is a national emergency. And I think Donald Trump is just hoping that throw enough sand in people's eyes, he can get into office. But as Anthony Scaramucci told me, Trump's former communications director, you know, this they want to be a dictator. He said it out loud. And we should take him at his word. But I think that. Uh, uh, what would uh, caught my eye, Isaac, about your book, because I think. Some of us that consider ourselves progressive, uh, me and the civil rights side of that, fail to really build. We try to work on this now with Nash Action Network, an infrastructure. Talk more about how they redid themselves and went from the bottom, very local, very grassroots up, because I think that's under estimated in all of the flash we see of Donald Trump. Yeah, absolutely. It's been very under the radar, and it's just in the past few years. It's really since Trump left office that this has been happening. And, and Steve Bannon had a huge part in this by popularizing this idea called the precinct strategy, which was exactly that, Stop starting at the bottom at the precincts and going up in the party organization itself. This was the innovation over the Tea Party, which was like, you know, everyone go to this Tea Party meeting, you know, this Tea Party, that Tea Party. And, and the idea here was, no, 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 we have the Republican Party and we're going to use the Republican Party organization, the Republican Party structure. There's real power in that. There's money. There's volunteers. There's infrastructure. That is the the infrastructure that all the candidates use. And and they're not the, the motivation for that, which has a lot of truth in it, actually, is that the reason that Trump failed in 2020 was because of a few uncooperative Republicans and that by taking over the party apparatus and purifying the party, they would make sure that that wouldn't happen again. Gabe, you did a great job here of nailing the sophistication of mm -hmm. the Trump campaign this go round mm -hmm. and that it is not just a hack organization yeah. the way it was playing by the seat of their pants back in 2016. That's right. So if the campaign competency continues over into the policy realm. Mm -hmm. That's where I think Democrats should really worry if, you know, not only that the campaign might be successful, in yeah. the end, but then in the policy realm. What are you hearing about there? Do you think that it's going to be run with equal sophistication? Well, I mean, by their own uh, admission, you know, Jason Miller said that if they win the election, that the White House will be staffed only with loyalists. They've weeded out all the backstabbers, you know, really important figure in this whole drama is Johnny McEntee, who was uh, Donald Trump's former body man in the 2016 cycle. He rose up in Trump world. He became the head of uh, White House personnel in the uh, Trump administration. And his job is really to vet thousands and thousands of potential appointees who will go into the civil service and carry out the MAGA agenda. He's working with the Heritage Foundation and they're creating, similar to this ground game, basically an army of people that will be ready in January 2025 to get into the government and carry out Trump's agenda. Yeah, funny how that happens, right? Uh, give me one second, folks. No. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. On to our next one. So remember I said I was going to give you a couple of different videos by this guy. Hopefully we'll get to play it. But it appears that they really don't want me having any control over uh, what, uh, what I'm actually uh, doing on here today. Uh, they are, they're coming at me. I can I, I can see the packets hit, hitting my computer like crazy. I've been watching the uh, 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 I've been watching this thingy here, and uh, you see how it's very high. It's in the danger level. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I'm keeping an eye on it, though. We'll see where it goes. All right. Here's another one. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink manages a $8.7 trillion portfolio. They got their funds because American International Group and Halliburton, Kellogg, Brown & Root embezzled U.S. taxpayer dollars for defenses. They stole from the United States military and committed treason at Decrit in what's known as the Camp Spiker Massacre. I know this because I'm a DOD firefighter who was in Iraq in 2014. My name is Adam Knutson, and I'm whistleblower of the largest terrorist attack since 9-11. It's called the Camp Spiker Massacre. KTAM 418-CV-04230 SLDJEH. I'm calling on American International Group Legal Representation, Mick Thomas of Thomas Quinn Law, phone number 415-546-6100, to set trial for Open Defense Base Act cases that contain the Camp Spiker Massacre as evidence. Instead of returning the money for defenses, you guys hedge against the American people in BlackRock. Rico, BlackRock. Yeah. One piece at a time. I get it one piece at a time. Didn't cost me a dime. All right, here we go. Russian News exposes official documents to show the CIA committing pedophilia and bestiality. Oh, boy. More than 3,600 pages of deeply disturbing material, 75 of them ever more so. The part of the trove logging sex crimes against children committed by at least 10 CIA employees and contractors in the worst of cases against very young children. Someone had inappropriate sexual activity with an unidentified two-year-old girl admitted to having inappropriate sexual contact with on the then six-year-old on two separate occasions. The PEB voted unanimously to recommend termination and revocation of his clearances. The Eastern District of Virginia U.S. Attorney's Office declined prosecution of based on taint issues. This individual, whose identity was cloaked by a code name along with everybody else, was fired but never charged, according to the papers. Another CIA employee was caught with thousands of inappropriate images of children on his work laptop. The agency employee had used his United States government laptop computer to view approximately 14,000 images of pornography, of which 1,400 were of underage individuals. The United States Attorney's Office declined prosecution of in favor of administrative action by the agency. In view of the PEB recommendations, it's recommended that this case be closed with no further action. Was any legal action taken against them? Well, the answer to that question remains a mystery. None of the 75 pages mention anything of the sort. They do mention a CIA contractor, though, who crawled into the darkest corner of the Internet and thought he was seducing a child. The child luckily turned out to be an undercover FBI agent. And allegedly solicited an undercover essay from the FBI in an online chat room in an attempt to travel interstate for the purposes of having sex with what he believed to be an underage child. The case is being closed. The agency terminated the contract with the individual, and again, apparently no further action was taken. Yet they say they take such crimes very seriously. While we cannot comment on the reasons why specific cases were declined, we do take very seriously any allegation that our prosecutors declined a potential case based on an improper assessment of the relevant factors. And it took years for these papers to even become public and reveal that apparently the CIA badge is a real-life equivalent of a get-out-of-jail-free card, even for the worst of crimes. Well, we've sent requests to both the CIA and the U.S. Attorney's Office for Virginia to get their comments about these cases. If we hear back, we will, of course, tell you what they say. Well, let's talk now to former CIA analyst John Kiriakou. Welcome to RT. Uh, the child abuse claims in these documents are shocking enough. What do you think about in terms of the cover-up that this document suggests as well? I don't think there's any surprise here at all. You know that phrase, shocked but not surprised? That's how I felt when this news broke. The CIA is a very, very sexualized organization, and uh, they're very good at covering up crimes. All they have to do is say sources and methods. All they have to do is say that they want to protect classified information. And so, as you said a moment ago, 
uh, CIA officers and contractors can commit the most heinous crimes, crimes against children, and not be prosecuted. Why do you think it's taken so long for these incidents to even be revealed? Where are the whistleblowers in this? Well, that's a good question. There are no whistleblowers. There should have been whistleblowers at every step of the way. And the reason why it took so long for this news to finally see the light of day is because the CIA fought it in court. Uh, Jason Leopold, a journalist for the U.S. news organization BuzzFeed, filed more than 12 Freedom of Information Act requests and filed three separate lawsuits before this information was finally freed up and made public just a couple of days ago. Uh, Jason did a, a great public service in donating the information and all the documents to WikiLeaks. So the information is there now for everybody to see it. But the reason why we, we didn't know about this any earlier is that there was no whistleblower and the CIA would not allow the information to be released. Mm. Some of the suspects in this document have even admitted to their crimes. People are going to be very surprised as to why there's been no legal process from that, that they haven't been brought to justice if they've admitted to something so heinous. Yes, it's called gray mail. Uh, what the CIA always fears is that uh, someone will get up on the stand in court uh, to testify on his own behalf and reveal classified information, and especially will reveal sources and methods, perhaps the names of, uh, of sources or information about ongoing operations. And so in exchange for not revealing that information, there's usually a plea deal or, as you saw in this situation, no court case at all. Mm. Well, now that these, even though they're heavily redacted documents, now they're out in the open, now that there is this exposure, do you think that at least opens the door to some sort of uh, justice redress? I doubt it. I have a friend at the CIA uh, with whom I worked for many years, and we, uh, we spent time overseas together and at CIA headquarters. He had gone into operations uh, after spending decades in security. He was a polygrapher, and he told me that I would be shocked and sickened if I had any idea how many CIA employees in the course of their polygraph exams admitted to having sex with animals. Well, now we're talking about having sex with children. And if nothing was done about those, those CIA employees having sex with animals, I certainly don't expect them to do anything about the children. Mm. But by their nature, child abusers are devious. The CIA is trained to do covert work. How difficult is it for the government to be able to try and stop the rot inside the CIA? Well, you know, this is what these internal controls are supposed to be all about. This is this is what the polygraph is for. It's supposed to weed out perverts and criminals and crazy people. And in fact, because the CIA CIA also attracts sociopaths, that is, people who feel no regret or remorse for their actions. They slip through the cracks. Unless mm. there is serious change inside the CIA and certainly more transparency, I don't see this changing at all. Mm. It's only a troubling time, isn't it? Okay, John Kiriakou, former CIA analyst, thanks for joining us, RT. My pleasure. Thank you. Yep. So, story's coming out. Whether it gets anything done or not, doesn't know. Don't know. All right. The general says, this needs to be shared across the country and seen by everyone li living in a Democrat-run city. You are being replaced by people you are voting for. You are voting for your own demise. Here we go. Politically, having over 500 people in our community would completely wipe out any interest we have. Are you aware that there are immigrant advocates at state houses all over this country who are, who are advocating for non-citizen voting in local elections? What if that happened here? That would change the mindset of what we as a black community need to thrive here in Chicago. That's a concern of ours. This is much bigger than the mayor of Chicago or Chicago Police Department. 
This is an effort to destroy our neighborhoods and silence our voices even further. Politically, having over 500 people in our community would completely wipe out any interest we have. Are you aware that there are immigrant advocates at state houses all over this country who are, who are advocating for non-citizen voting in local elections? What if that happened here? Yeah. Just a whole lot of hoopla. Whole lots. Whole lots. Hang on. Let me get this door closed. Get out of my way. Go. Go. Yeah. Dogs are outside beep, yelling at somebody. All right. Uh, let's see here. Wow. I can't access anything. Man, they really do not like me today. Not one bit. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. All right. But why do you think it is that when you say the economy is improving and President Biden says the economy is improving, that a majority of Americans outside of this building are not buying it? All right. Thanks, everybody, except Peter Ducey. But why do you think it is that when you say the economy is improving and President Biden... I think she likes him. That's really crazy. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can't do that one. Okay. I was zooming in on a photo my friend just took of the eclipse and noticed some strange objects. Let's take a peek. Yeah, kind of strange. I thought this was good. Young ladies, this is for you. A woman arrived in a store wearing clothes that showed her body all too well. The shop owner, being a wise older man, took a good look at her, asked her to sit down, looked her straight into the eye, and said something she would never forget for the rest of her life. Young lady, everything that God has made valuable is in the world or in this world is covered up and hard to see or find. For example, where can you find diamonds? In the ground, covered and protected. Where are the pearls? Deep in the ocean, covered and protected in a beautiful shell. Where can you find gold? Underground, covered with layers of rock. And to get there, you have to work very hard and dig deep. He looked at her again and said, your body is sacred and unique to God. You are far more precious than gold, diamonds, and pearls. Therefore, you must be covered too. Then he's added, if you keep your precious minerals like gold, diamonds, and pearls deeply covered, a reputable mining organization with a, the necessary machines will work for years to mine those precious goods. First, they will contact your government, family. Second, sign professional contracts, marriage. Third. They will professionally extract these goods and tenderly refine these precious goods, marital life. But if you let your minerals find themselves on top of the earth's surface exposed to everybody, you will always attract many illegal miners to come exploit illegally and freely take those riches and leave you without the precious goods God gave you. Women, you are valuable. Remember, class is more desirable than trash. And that was written by Diane Walls. And women should realize that. They really should. I can't play that because it's a song. Yeah. If black lives matter and black voices matter, why not these black voices? It's time to show the world who really is the most popular president. 
Uh, and we call on the people to vote for Trump. Make America great again. We voting for Trump. Amen. We rocking with Trump, man. We need Trump to just rock out, man. We fucking with Trump. Super Tuesday, Super Trump. It comes with a four-year guarantee. Don't worry. I'm black. Of course I voted for President Trump. I want to keep my freedom. Trump 2024. Trump Baltimore. Trump 2024, baby. Hey, yo, I'm a patriot, and I love Trump, and I support Trump. And if you don't like it... Fuck y'all, we jacking Trump. Everybody had a lot to say when Trump was in the, was in the White House. Anybody got shit to say with this fucking old-ass bum? Oh, man, they are playing with me today. We don't care. Trump, we need you to hold on, because we are coming. Come on, y'all. Let's own up to it so that we can all support this man together. Yes, we are here to support our president, Donald John Trump. And I wear this hat. And I support Donald Trump. Hi, Leo 2.0 here. I'm a big time Trump supporter. I don't give a fuck who mad about it. I'm voting for Donald Trump. Yep, I'm a diehard Trump rider. We love you, President Donald Trump. I don't give a fuck who look at me different. I'm voting for Trump. Y'all messed up, bro. Trump 2024, baby. Well, who do we need for president? We need that Donald Trump. All right. This indictment is causing black people to support Donald Trump more. Mr. Trump, we got your back. It's happening, guys. I noticed that everyone is for Trump at this point. I mean, everyone. Trump 2024, man. Free Trump. Uh, gangster. Trump 2024. Fuck y'all. Free Big Trump. Yeah. They woke up. All right. Another BS court ruling. Are there any constitutional judges anymore? Texans can no longer open carry without the threat of going to jail in Texas. Yeah. So the brilliant move by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals out of Louisiana, this federal court has decided that if you're open carry in Texas and somebody calls and complains about you, then the police have the authority to take you to jail. Yeah. And then it goes on to say you'll probably be released with no charges, but they have the authority to take you to jail. Blah, 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 blah. So what they're trying to do is discourage people from open carry in Texas. Funny thing is, Texas actually put a bill in place a long time ago. We got a law in place that makes it to where we will not adhere to any new federal federal laws that take away our constitutional rights. Yeah, especially rights regarding to the Second Amendment. As far as I understand it, any police officer that comes into Texas and tries to enforce federal laws and take away your Second Amendment rights, then that police officer is subject to arrest as well. See, that's the part that you're not hearing on social media, right? So I would hate to be the first sheriff in charge of a deputy that decides to arrest somebody for open carry. I'd hate to be a mayor or a chief of police for any of these departments because I can pretty much promise you that Texas will rain down vengeance with great thunder and furious anger to whichever department tries to take away that Second Amendment right. As far as that Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals goes, uh, out in the Louisiana, that federal court, from what I understand, it's like three judges they're out here deciding the fate of millions of people in Texas. And let me just tell you guys, straight up from one Texan, you know, from one Texan to you on that Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, we have no respect for you at all, and we're going to do what we want. Hey, peace and love. And he's right. Absolutely right. Yep. Carly Boone says, Woody Johnson, New York Jets co-owner, was inside Trump's Palm Beach fundraiser. We have to save our country. Let's see what he's got to say. 
Texans can well, no longer. It was a Trump's eclipse, <laughs> I guess, by your, your monologue. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. You know, I've been going to these things for, you know, since Reagan. I've never seen anything like it. You know, everybody's back. Uh, $50 million, as you said, twice what Biden and Clinton and uh, Obama raised together. Um, very enthusiastic uh, people. It was about 100 people at that dinner, a little over. Very appreciative uh, of what Trump and his family, uh, President Trump and his family, are giving up to do this, to save America and make America great again. So uh, the good news is you raised $50 million just to start. All these people are fired up. And second, the small and medium-sized donor also came in with a huge, huge uh, 50 million, another 50. So that's, that's uh, you know, a couple million a day. Pretty good. It's pretty good and, and blows yeah. away the Biden record. Not even, not even close. We always hear about what Joe Biden tells donors at these events. He goes off script. Does former President Donald Trump tell donors things different than what he tells the public. What did he say to you at this fundraiser? I think it was one of the best speeches. You know, each one gets better and better. But he really was very relaxed with this group. And he, he kind of described what he wants to do in the dire straits of the country's end with inflation and, you know, no rule of law, an open border, what's going on in the Middle East and Europe. Uh, and all this uh, tremendous inflation, gas prices that are unattainable for a lot of people. And he has the solution. He's done it before. And this time, I think he'll be even better, a lot better, because he really knows what he's doing now. So he'll be able to get uh, inflation down, gas prices down by drill, baby drill. Uh, he'll close the border. He'll make good deals with China and North Korea and some of our adversaries in Iran and, uh, and Israel and so on. Uh, and I think the world will be a safer and better place. There'll be less crime. Um, he's extremely compassionate. People don't know that. He's extremely funny. I think people are starting to appreciate his sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just impressed all of us once again. And I think... Yeah, the overwhelming thought was, yeah, this is just the beginning for us. Everybody in that room was ready to step up hard. But it was really an appreciation. Good. That, that's what, uh, no, what that's it's, doing, it, you know? it's good. It's good to hear that the party is coming together and coalescing after a lot of the division we've seen over the last couple of years. Now, we've had an earthquake. We've now had a solar eclipse. And your starting quarterback uh, almost was a vice presidential candidate. What is going <laughs> on? What, what is happening right now? Uh, he is getting back to football 100%. He never left football. Okay. But that was, uh, that was a momentary distraction, maybe like the, uh, you know, going in the, the dark room or whatever, but he's back 100%. Great leader. Uh, you know, I tell the, I tell the receivers, you count to 10, hold your hands up and look around, the ball will be there. Right. So, you know, he is, he's going to be really good. If we can keep him on his feet, which I think we can, uh, he's going to be, it's going to be an exciting uh, start to the season. All right. We got to save the Jets, save Rogers, save America. Woody and Johnson. Most important, save the country. Save, save the, the country. country. And you're doing a great job. And congratulations on your numbers. They're really good. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And President Trump's numbers, also pretty good. Thank really good. So You're much. the same. All right. All right. So he's saying uh, Aaron Rodgers is who he was talking about there. Um, and uh, yeah, I received this from a follower, a Delta flight out of Phoenix to Atlanta, full of illegals. Atlanta is a Delta hub. So these illegals are most likely being flown from there throughout the country. One even has an ankle monitor. Is he a criminal? They all had the same paperwork and bag. This is common occurrence. And there's the package that is given to them. And there's the ankle monitor. And yeah, they all have blue bags. Yeah. What's up with that? You know? All right. Well, here's Donald Trump for you himself. Let's take a listen. Under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, 
thriving and healthy American families. We want to make it easier for mothers and families to have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like IVF in every state in America. Like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans, I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. What could be more beautiful or better than that? Today, I'm pleased that the Alabama legislature has acted very quickly and passed legislation that preserves the availability of IVF in Alabama. They really did a great and fast job. The Republican Party should always be on the side of the miracle of life and the side of mothers, father, their beautiful babies, and that's what we are. IVF is an important part of that, and our great Republican Party will always be with you in your quest for the ultimate joy in life. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is, the baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people, for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. This 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state. It was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. You must follow your heart on this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently and very sadly a nation in decline. Our nation needs help. It needs unity. It needs us all to work closely together. Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, everyone, we have to work together. We have to bring our nation back from the brink, and that's where it is. It's at the brink, and we will. We will do it, I promise you. We will do it. Always go by your heart, but we must win. We have to win. We are a failing nation, but we can be a failing nation no longer. We will make our nation great. We will make our nation greater than ever before. Thank you very much. There's always a great message. Yep. So, uh, therefore, or I mean, therefore, I am breaking Democrat from Illinois, Rita Mayfield, sponsored a bill to eliminate that uh, or to eliminate law that imposes life sentences for repeat violent criminals. In Illinois, someone convicted three times of serious felonies like murder, aggravated kidnapping or sexual assault faces an automatic life sentence under the state's habitual criminal law. 
but they won't have to worry anymore because legislation aims to repeal habitual criminal laws, including penalties for repeat offenders of serious crimes and firearms charges if it passes out of the House Judiciary Criminal Committee. Uh, Mayfield claims that the bill will save the state money. I guess the safety of her constituents isn't so important to her. And that's her right there. That's her. Yeah. It's crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy, crazy. You know, uh, we just watched that one. Uh, he just didn't listen. And this is the thing about dogs. And I try to tell people this all the time. He just didn't listen. He's an idiot. Pay attention. Watch this game, bro. With me? Excuse me. Yeah. What's your name? That's it's a nice dog you got. Thank you. I really appreciate it. What's your name? Um, I'm sorry, I'm really not interested. Well, can I pet your dog? It's a no, nice dog. Please don't try to pet my dog. We don't. Ma my dog is highly trained, and we don't allow. Bro, I've been dog. around dogs all my life. The dogs Sit. is not like that. Sit. Your dog don't even. If he would have attacked me, if he wanted to. He will attack you, and please do not do that. Listen, don't bro. Like nobody's trying to pet my dog. I already told you, my dog is trained. Well, can I can I shake your hand? What's your name? Shake my hand. You reach it. No, I apologize. Why y'all females always be acting like that? I have a husband. I'm married. I'm just not interested. Bro, you try to make it seem like your dog is gonna attack me. He Come on, bro. Get, get me get back up. Get back away from me. Get him. Get him. Get him. Hey, hey, get your dog, bro. Get your dog. Get your dog. Get your dog, bro. Come on, man. Come on, all right, get him, get him, get him. Bro, 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 come on, get him, get him. You can you can't blame the dog for that. You cannot blame the dog for that. She she told him, she warned him, she told him I'm not interested. Leave her the hell alone. The dog is well behaved enough that when she called him back to her, he did respond. You know, if he had continued the attack, then I would have been a little bit more concerned. But you know, this dude asked for it. hundred percent he asked for it. Speaking of dogs, yeah. Kid sings to his dog on his last day on earth. Yeah, go on and tear me apart. I don't care if it do. Ooh, cause in the sky, cause in the sky, full of stars. I think I saw you. Yeah. You know, our relationship with our pets, our animals, you know, is important and they pay more attention to us than we can, than we can fathom. You know, way more than we can fathom. And uh, that kid uh, basically just expressed to that dog. How much you meant. Yeah. Uh, to all the U.S. haters out there, with your disgusting chance of death to America, if you aren't happy, you can leave. Uh, if you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. If you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. And he's right. You don't like it, you can leave. Uh, if you're not happy... 
All right, horrible. Joe Biden dropped off dropped off 326,000 illegal migrants in Miami with no warning. Make no mistake. This is Joe Biden's plan to punish red states, steal your vote, and then push fentanyl, infectious diseases, and crime all across this country. Enough. Here we go. What is this all about? Do you have any idea how many people have been flown into various states? 326,000 illegal migrants were flown directly to Miami with no advance notice to the governor. Well, Maria, that tells you all you need to know about whether Joe Biden actually wants to shut down the border. He doesn't want to shut down the border. This is all by design. We've been saying this since the beginning, and that proves it right there. You know, if we shut our border down in Texas, which we're working hard to do that with our, uh, our DPS and our uh, National Guard, we are shutting our border down in Texas. It's going elsewhere. But if, 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 if other states try to do that, he's just going to fly them in. I mean, he, he wants these migrants to come here. There's a, there's a, there's a reason behind uh, all of this. You know, it's it, whether they think they're going to get them registered to vote or they think it's going to affect the census uh, or uh, the, the number of electoral votes that they're going to get in certain states. Uh, this is this is by design. And I, I think that, you know, it, it's unbelievable that he's getting away with this. We don't know the answer. You ask, do we know how many they won't share information with us? So we have to find out via other means. The, the Biden administration is being very uh, secretive about what they're doing. And they've been flying migrants into the country for a long time now, uh, 300, 300 plus thousand into Florida. I think that's directed at at Florida, uh, because you know they're a state that's trying to, uh, like Texas is, uh, control uh, control the immigration issue. So you got Joe Biden battling red states because they're trying to uh, protect yeah. their states. They, they, they don't want Texas to, you know, uh, arrest anybody who's uh, who's coming in illegally, and they are just jamming people into Florida. Is this all about because they're Republican-led states? A hundred percent. I think that there's a huge effort in the White House to punish r uh, red states, uh, in particular, Florida and Texas. I think that's been going on for a long time. You know, in Texas, we've spent, you know, uh, billions of our own tax dollars, our Texas tax dollars, not our federal tax dollars, trying to do the government's job and secure our border. And yeah. the federal government's just fine with that. And they're just fine with wow. that. And they're going to do the same thing to Florida. Let me get your medical uh, expertise here, because medical experts tell Fox News Digital that the outbreak of measles and tuberculosis uh, at Chicago migrant shelters could have been avoided if the illegal migrants had been vaccinated at the border and they were not living in such cramped conditions. We now have to worry about tuberculosis outbreaks uh, in Chicago, Congressman. Yeah, no, this is a this is a public health crisis. It's a public health issue. The border has always been a public health issue. I remember Maria, whenever I was the chief medical officer back in 2018, President Trump sent me to the border down in San Diego because there were a few cases of measles that um, a few cases. I'm talking like five or ten that had been detected, and he t he treated it very seriously. And we went down there to figure out what we could do. They've known for a long time that there's all kinds of infectious diseases that are crossing our southern border with the massive numbers. You know, they got exemptions for COVID. You know, when all the rest of us were living under the, the authoritarian, uh, you know, state and, and all the mandates that we had with COVID, uh, it, none of that applied to immigrants crossing the southern border. And it's been the same throughout this entire time. Measles, you know, is, is serious it, for children. It's serious for pregnant uh, for pregnant women. There, there's a lot of potential bad outcome from a measles outbreak in the United States. Uh, and tuberculosis, I mean, has it, always been a big concern, especially when you take migrants that come in here and they have tuberculosis and they're going to they're going to diagnose them in these shelters, they're going to try to treat them. They're not going to take the six months of antibiotics that they're supposed to take. And they're going to end up with drug resistant strains that are going to be a problem for this country. Drug resistant tuberculosis is a huge threat uh, from the migrant population that's crossing our border right now. And it would be a really big public uh, health issue for this country if that were to happen. Uh, so they're, they, they, they They've completely ignored this, uh, along with the, you know, the, the drugs and the cartels that are that are pushing stuff across the border, the sex trafficking, uh, everything else that's happened, the potential terrorists that are crossing our border. They've just turned a blind eye to our border since day one, and they continue to do so despite wow. the overwhelming number of threats. What else can come hitting us now? Now we're worried about tuberculosis, which we have not heard about in decades, uh, but we got it now in Chicago. Congressman, thank you. Ronnie Jackson joining us this morning. Thank you, Maria. We appreciate your time, sir. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Yep. Since 1936, tuberculosis has been wildly, mildly, or wildly under control. The dragon cover-up. The fact that
This was discovered hiding under a painting during a renovation of a cathedral in Naples says it all. Another sloppy cover-up of our true past at work. I think they tried to cover up giants and dragons, griffins, and a lot of other creatures. Yet they did such a sloppy job, they just ended up calling them mythical creatures. But isn't it odd, the Chinese zodiac has all real creatures but one. And the fact that so many of our cultures all across our realm share the same depictions of dragons, much like they do giants and many other creatures. These artists drew exactly what they saw. And you can still find some mud fossil remains. Like here's the dragon head cave in Egypt. This world is vastly different than what we've been told it was. And why cover up dragons? It's the same reason why they lied to us about all of our history. Those unaware of their true past and their true origins are all that much easier to control. Perhaps dragons explained some of those melted castles. And just look what our old dictionary said about dragons. Now rare. Yep. Think about all those fairy tales. Yeah. This is seriously not that just sitting well with me, says Elm 22.0. Cole Brings Plenty has been found and he is no longer alive. I'm going to show you the press release that just came out. There's not much information yet, so all I can ask is that you send love and thoughts and healing to all of his friends, all of his family members, family members that are there right now and are having to hear this news. This is not the update I wanted to bring. This is not how anybody wanted this to end. This press release is from Johnson County, Kansas Sheriff's Office, and it was released just a few minutes ago. It states on April 5th at 1145 AM, deputies were dispatched to the area of 200th and Homestead Lane in reference to an unoccupied vehicle. Deputies checked the area and discovered a male in a wooded area away from the vehicle. The male has been identified as Cole Brings Plenty, 27 years old. Investigation, CSI, and the medical examiner are on scene. This investigation is ongoing. If you have any information, please reach out to Johnson County Sheriff's Office at 913-782-0720. Any questions can reach out to JCSO Mackenzie Davis at 913-212-4672 or via email right there. Rest in peace to Cole. According to all of the words I have read about this man in the last few days while I've been watching this as a missing persons case, the world seems to have just lost an amazing person. Again, my thoughts go out to all of his family, his friends, all of the lives he touched while he was here. We'll see what comes out as far as how this happened. But again, most importantly, rest in peace. The good use of today. We're losing them. We're losing them. Here's another eclipse. Ah, <laughs> uh, he just had an eclipse, didn't he? <laughs> All right, Ghost Gone, put this up. Cut the Mercator projection. They say that the contrary happens, that the shadow gets smaller. Look at the Mercator projection, and on the globe, you have there a zigzag path of eclipses. That makes no sense, so I plot these cities on the flat earth map and voila. Everything makes sense now. The sun and the moon are much smaller than we are told and they make their circuit above the flat earth when they cross paths. That's when we have solar eclipses. The lunar eclipse is caused by dark bodies that are not made public but that are documented in the Royal Astronomical Society of London. 
They say that the contrary happens, that the shadow gets smaller. Look at the Mercator projection and on the globe, you have there a zigzag path of eclipses. Well, and what I really have enjoyed about this discussion is that the focus is exclusively on one administration, one family, one president. This is really about a global scheme to hurt America, to hurt our interest, driven by the Chinese. And, and really, you've played a key part in, in giving us visibility into that scheme through the most high profile alleged bribes that you could possibly imagine uh, to the people who are now behind the Resolute Desk uh, in the Oval Office. Final question, uh, Tony, with all you've exposed and talked about, do you fear retaliation? Is that something that you went into this knowing would be potentially a part of your life going forward? Um, in 2020, as I told you, I was a very private, no social media, low key. Um, I could I could hear my two grandfathers and my father saying, you can't sit on the sideline. You know too much. You have to come forward and tell the American people the truth. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know the right people to talk to. This was all out of water, you know, out of element for me. I was willing to do it then. We live in the greatest country in the world based on truth, based on the freedom that, you know, our people have fought and died for before us. I was happy to do it. I didn't think much about retaliation. I, I expected it. I've been warned of it. Um, as, as recently as, you know, in our congressional hearing where Lev Parnas is threatening me, sitting next to me, warning they're coming for you. I think it's laughable that uh, the Democrats are asking Lev Parnas to weigh in on my credibility, a convicted felon that served jail time. I have an impeccable record. Now, he warned me earlier in this hearing that they're coming for me. I look. Oh, I didn't worry. I said, just keep talking. I, You'll I be look, there soon. I look forward to that, Mr. Parnas. Keep lying. You'll be there soon. Well, and and is that, when it, is that a threat, yeah, Mr. Parnas? No, it's just the truth. No, did you uh, say they I were coming that. for me? No, I said if you keep lying, you will end up in prison. I'm not lying. You're well, the one who was you're lying. Not, you you're the one who went to prison what am for I lying. lying for? Well, let him come. The truth will win out, and our country is worth fighting for. And I'm more than happy to do it. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel with notifications turned on. Goodbye, man. Breaking. A squatter has been granted a restraining order against the landlord by Washington State Judge. If you live in a state where squatters have more rights than property owners, maybe it's time to leave. Right now in uh, the Woodbridge neighborhood, there are dozens of protesters getting ready for a massive rally. This is the house here right now where uh, saying Kim is staying, allegedly not paying the rent for months now, costing the small mom and pop landlord thousands of dollars this neighborhood is absolutely irate here right now look at this you've got uh folks here taking photos up saying hey how you doing look at this they're getting really personal here right now signs that say saying kim leave now dirty saying kim fix broken system saying stop embarrassing your family incredible uh turnout here look at this you've got every street corner here just angry neighbors here to support Jaskaran singh he's the landlord who's essentially being fleeced right now and we're gonna go into this house possibly to see if mr kim is home let's see this Mr. Kim, just want your side of the story. What are your thoughts on the protesters? Aren't you the one technically trespassing? There you have it. He came to the door, came to the door and says he's going to call the police on me for trespassing. Open the door now. I mean, you've got angry neighbors here. Looks like uh, people are resorting to vigilante justice potentially at this point. I mean, you've got a lot of angry neighbors, so the rally's going to start any minute now, but you can see people from all over Bellevue, all across the east side here. Just Yep, squatter's rights. All right. They told us 2020 
POTUS candidate Buddha judge. That's kind of messed up. This is the art in his house. Yeah. Sick fucker. Sick, sick, sick. All right. Uh, actually, we'll cover this one a little bit later. Uh, let's get into this one here. There's people walking around out here that are soulless avatars simply operating on matrix programming. They're living, but they're not alive. And they're all around us. They're all over the place. People that have never woken up to who they truly actually are. They simply are operating on the code that they've been programmed and given since they were born, since they were even in the womb at, in, at gestation. The same code, just running on programming. Never exceeding the programming, never reprogramming the programming, never editing it, never hacking themselves, just running on the pure code and living a complete lie, believing that they're alive, but they're not. Yeah, Billy Carson. All right, moving on to our next one. Boom, New York is in play, baby. RFK Jr.'s New York State Campaign Director, Rita Palma, reveals her number one priority is preventing a Biden win. What a hell of a way to say the entire point is to steal Biden votes. Yeah, let's take a listen. So right now, the way that I see it and, you know, things, I guess, will change over time because you do have to only pick one candidate at the end of the day. But the Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, the enemy, our mutual enemy is Biden. Whether you support Bobby or Trump, we all oppose Biden. 270 wins the election. If you don't get to 270, if nobody gets to 270, then Congress picks the president. Right. Right now we have a majority of Republicans in Congress. So who are they going to pick? Who are they going to pick if it's a Republican Congress? They'll pick Trump. So we're rid of Biden either way. People kept continually telling me, wow, that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. So, you know, I'm kind of mulling it around. What should I do with this? What should I do with this? And then I got, got a call from the campaign and, you know, they were going to hire me as their New York State director. And I said, okay, I, I, I want to take the job, but I'm going to tell you right now that this is part of my messaging. And if I'm allowed to preach that, if I'm allowed to, you know, get that message out there, then, yeah, I will definitely work for the campaign. But I don't want to be restricted in what I say, because I think this is a really winning strategy. And my boss said, well, OK. I went to California, had this massive crowd. I said, why would I lose California automatically because you're a Republican? Why would I lose California? Look at this crowd. It's as big as we've ever had. Or New York. I think I'd do well in New York if we had everything was on the up and up. And by the way, we're putting a heavy move on New York because New York is not the same place. New York was unhappy three years ago, but New York's really unhappy now. Yeah. Well, and I think we can do Lee Zeldin. Yeah. I went to California, had this massive crowd. I said, why would I lose? Yep. Yep. A homeless encampment in Oakland, California. This is the California model that Gavin Newsom and other Democrats want for the rest of the country. Crazy, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Listen to this experiment that was done on monkeys. Do they use similar tactics to condition human population? This is how the media machine works. It's very interesting, so pay attention. What the heck? 
Another crazy experiment that, that very closely mimics modern humans was done in the 1960s by a psychologist by the name of G.R. Stevenson. So what this guy did was he put five monkeys in a cage together and hung bananas from the ceiling. And anytime one of the monkeys would go to climb the cage to get the bananas, all of the monkeys would get splashed with ice cold water. And so the monkeys quickly learned. So none of them climbed because none of them wanted to be punished. Now the interesting part begins. What Stevenson did next was he took one of the monkeys out and replaced it with a new monkey, one who has no idea about the water. And so, of course, when the new monkey gets in the cage, the first thing he tries to do is climb up the side of the cage to get a banana, and the other four monkeys instantly grabbed him, pulled him down, and beat the crap out of him. And this monkey very quickly learned, if I try to climb up the wall to get a banana, the monkeys pull me down and beat me up. So he stopped climbing up the wall as well. Now, one by one, they replaced each of the remaining four monkeys with new monkeys. And the same pattern happened. So in the end, you have five brand new monkeys who've never been splashed with water ever. Brand new monkeys who've been brainwashed. But whenever one of them would climb up the cage to try and get a banana, the other four would pull it down and beat it up. And no one even understands why. And it correlates very closely to modern humans because this is how the media machine works. If you are able to brainwash a certain percent of the population, you're not able to think critically and understand why am I doing this? Why do I believe what I believe? They only do it because they're told to by society around them. And I genuinely believe a lot of these experiments that happened in the 60s were used on the population and have been very, very effective. If you enjoy thinking critically and learning to understand the world from a unique perspective. Yep. Human conditioning. In 2006, Joe Biden held the same position on abortion that Trump holds now. I, I do not view abortion as a um, as a choice and a right. I think it's always a tragedy. And I think that uh, it should be uh, rare and safe. And I think we should be focusing on how to limit the number of abortions. And they ought to be able to have a common ground and consensus as to do that. I think the vast majority of the American people think that can be done. Um, but unfortunately, we're put in a position you either eliminate abortions under all circumstance or it's, quote, abortion on demand. The fact of the matter is I've never known of a woman having an abortion and say, by the way, I feel like having an abortion. Today. It's always a tragic decision made, always a difficult decision. I, I do not view abortion as a uh, um, as a choice and a right. I think it's always a tragedy, and I think that uh, it should be uh, rare and. So then, on another note, if they tell you if you look at that, you'll go blind. That's what they tell you. Uh. I can still see. Not blind. I just want to say I have survived the eclipse. There is uh, no CERN, earthquakes, activation, any of the fear. Remember all that? What they were talking about that? And they also talk about if you look at the eclipse, you'll go blind. A lot of fear. A lot of fear. So the other part, too, is that the sun is not as dangerous as LED lights, which are linked to cataracts. But they tell you if you look at the eclipse, you'll go blind. But it's kind of like when Operation Mockingbird or the media used to tell people to wear a mask. Remember that? Stand on a sticker. You know, put up plastic all over the place, which is now in the ocean, and get one of these in your arm. Which do you think is more dangerous? The rays from the beautiful healing sun that gives us light? Or the, what the media tells us? You see the little moon? You see the little? It's starting. But they tell you not to go outside, put you in fear, sit in your house, you know, cover up, probably wear a mask, and then, you know, cover your eyes. Makes no sense. There you go. Eclipse going on. We're all here. Love you. So then on another note, if they... And safe, and I think we should be focusing on how to limit the number of.
I'm sitting here reading out loud and nobody's hearing me. Okay. I used to catch hell for saying war pig John McCain was a Democrat operative inside the Republican Party just to sabotage them. Remember when he screwed us on horrible Obamacare? Now you know. Hell on Wheels says, anybody really believes Cindy McCain was ever a Republican? Republican Cindy McCain endorses Joe Biden. My husband, John, lived by a code, country first. We are Republicans, yes, but Americans foremost. There's only one candidate in the race, in this race, who stands up for values as a nation, and that is Joe Biden. He is a good and honest man. He will lead us with dignity, riding with Biden. Yeah, your husband was a traitor. That's what he was. All right, now going into this next story. Whale giving birth in False Bay attracted sharks. Dolphins appeared out of nowhere and swam in circles around her, keeping sharks away. They stayed with her until her, she and her baby were safe, then escorted her to safety. This was amazing. That I wanted to share with you guys. There's a whole super dolphins, and there's a whole other one. This is. All coming together. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at them jumping and just. Never in my whole life. Never ever in my entire life did I ever think that I'd see something like this. He's there. Just another amazing story, you know? All right. Uh, black people are going to save America from Joe Biden. A lot of black people who said that they would never vote Trump are now voting for him. They realize they have been bamboozled by Biden and the Democrats. I can't convince my some of my family members to vote. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Here we go. Black people are going to save America from Joe Biden. You think so? Okay. We got tricked. He's weakened at Bernie's, bro. You literally re-upped on the most racist practice in America, gun control, mm. as the black people started buying more guns than ever. You said, we're going to send you to jail for 10 years. Fortunately, the Supreme Court was like, what? You are bugging. You speak to black people as if you literally own them. If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. What type of fucking... It's amazing. Yeah. It's the level of entitlement and audacity. Mind you, you're the same guy that crafted the criminal legislation, criminal, mm -hmm. to send many of these black men to jail in the first place. Black people are going to have to save America from Joe Biden. Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. And today I have a great video or a collage of videos to share with you guys. Black men are going to explain why they are supporting Donald Trump and the Republican Party. And really, it's not so much the Republican Party, but the conservative movement. Most Black people, most Black men are conservative, Christian-minded individuals. And that's, in my opinion, one of the of the main reasons why a lot of brothers and now some sisters are getting on board is because we have been separating our faith from our politics and we have been looking at the party 
that has been encouraging us to do so for 60 years, we realize that we have been voting against our own interests and against our own demise. Before we get into the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And without further ado, let's go. I'm just so genuinely curious that I have to ask the question. How are there still people out there that still genuinely believe that the person who is running this country is doing a great job and that they still want him to continue to run the country. And I'm not referring to the people who know that this person is corrupted, but they still want him in because they have underlining agendas. I'm talking about the people who still genuinely believe that this person is a good person to run this country. Like, are you tired of going to the grocery store and having to spend $160 just on eight items of food? Are you tired of going to the gas station and having to put $60 of gas just to fill up your car? Are you tired of seeing the chaos that is happening around the entire world because of the choices that have been made from this person in office? How can you continue to be so deceived despite living in your current reality? You have to. Just covered a whole lot there, didn't you? Yep. 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 All right, DEI female pilot moment. This is insane. Okay, if you don't feel safe, get off the airplane. But this is your captain you. speaking, okay. but never like just this. I'll stop, and I will fly the airplane. Don't worry, I'm going to let my co-pilot fly it. He's a man. Okay? It's a total meltdown. The pilot boarded okay, in her street clothes and addressed the passengers over the intercom. Passenger Pam O'Neill couldn't believe what was happening. She said, let's take a vote. How many of you would like to take off now with me dressed as I am? Or would you prefer that I take 10 minutes to get changed into my cute little uniform? Then she started talking about her divorce and political candidates. And the minute she mentioned that, um, a gentleman stood up and just yelled, whoa, enough. You're scaring me. Another passenger, Randy Reese, got up to leave and gave a running commentary on social media. Pilot also insulted a couple on board. Did I offend you? Okay, so did I purposely offend you? I did. The answer is yes. Flight attendant, please disarm door. After 20 passengers insisted on getting off the United Airlines flight, the pilot quietly left the aircraft. Okay, if you don't feel safe, get off the airplane. So you got this pilot who's DEI hire, and because, uh, uh, just because, <laughs> oh boy, all right, uh, new, a 68-year-old woman is in critical condition after becoming a victim in a brutal punching attack and robbery in Queens, New York. The victim was trailed from behind, and upon reaching the top of the stairs, the assailant leaped ahead, forcefully knocking her down, causing her uh, to go airborne. The thief was able to get away with his cell phone, credit cards, and cash before fleeing the scenes in the victim's car. Yeah. Police are searching for the man who threw a 68-year-old woman down the steps of a church and then robbed her. Police say the suspect took off with cash, her phone, and her car. Eight-year-old woman shoved with so much force, she flies into the air. Eyewitness News has decided to freeze the moment she crash lands on the sidewalk. While outside, the victim is being followed from behind. When she reaches the top step, the suspect jumps in front of her, knocks her down so hard she goes airborne, landing at the bottom of the stairs. The good-for-nothing suspect then steals $300 cash, her cell phone, her car keys, and then drove off in her car. While he's in the wind somewhere, cruising in her car, the 68-year-old is in critical condition at Booth Memorial Hospital. Now, the victim's car is a 2006 Nissan Altima. Police want anyone to look out for it if they see it or they recognize the suspect in the surveillance video. Call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-577-TIPS. And you notice these ain't white people running up there and knocking them down and stealing all their shit. Yep. Crazy.
Crazy, crazy, crazy. Kill me. He's Trump is actually more popular than 2016 and more popular than 2020. He's become more popular in 2024. He's winning in all the battleground states. And I could not stop watching. I could not believe the crap that was coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. Number one, she thinks that Donald Trump is in cahoots with Mark Burnett of Survivor and Apprentice on a Christian cult. Yes. So they're on the same wavelength. Does anybody think that Mark Burnett is orchestrating anything with Donald Trump or vice versa? Number two, she says, if you want to know what Donald Trump is doing, look at what the Chinese do for brainwashing and look at pimps. <laughs> I did not know they were working together to brainwash. And also, I think fundamentally, this is the problem. They thought they would be writing a story about Trump down, like he yeah. loses the primary, he goes to jail. And they'd look back and say, how did he get that cult going? But the bad news is he's actually more popular than 2016, more popular than 2020. He's more popular in 2024. He's winning in all the battleground states. He seems to be on top of these court cases and gaining momentum. So to do an after action report while he's at the top of his game seems bizarre to me. Mm. How did I do? That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. So stop sending me letters saying you want him fired. <laughs> Tyler, uh, is it is Trumpism a cult or is it more like a team? Like a team that you're like to be, you like the captain of the team. What is it like? You, you're inside Trump's head. I'm inside. First of all, I just want to say Walter looks like Greg if Alec Baldwin and you had a baby. He's got <laughs> Alec Baldwin, <laughs> and that's a compliment, minus the murder part. Yeah. But, but no, I think he'd be thrilled because, frankly, excuse me, in in yeah. well, if you think of it, I would have a pretty cool name because I'm the 45th. I would be called Cult 45 because we're killing it. Frankly, we're killing it. <laughs> And no, you know, there's worse cults that Biden would be in the Manson cult because they were good at trapping children. He would be sniffing out the kids for them, if you know what I mean. And of course, Heaven's Gate was a popular one because Biden is knocking on Heaven's Gate right now. You know, but no, we're not calling for mass suicide. We're calling for mass freedom. And that's, oh, that's what I'll say, frankly. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good impression, too. Pretty good. All right. The Vatican finally got something right. Vatican declares sex change surgery, surrogacy, and gender theory as grave threats to human dignity. It's like it was only yesterday, November 2023. The Pope posted a transgender prostitutes for a Vatican luncheon. Ah, oh, progress. So here's the news headline. Hopefully it'll come up. Fox News put it out. Vatican says, whoop. That was quick. Vatican says gender theory surrogacy violates human dignity and ethics document. Okay, let's see what's next. Hello. Transgender women go to lunch at the Vatican. Yeah, I don't see that once, believe me. Believe you me. Do not need to see that more than once. All right, moving on. What the heck? There we go. Okay. All right. Irishman says, we do not have a mass migration problem. We have a mass treason problem. John Waters. Let's take a listen to what he's got to say. 
in every level. I mean, people talk about it being a spiritual war. It is a spiritual war in, the, in lots of different senses, but in this particular sense, that this is good versus evil. This is the good of Ireland and its people against the evil that is trying to destroy it. And that doesn't, I'm not talking about uh, people coming here, the people, they're, they're, they're just patsies. They're just proxies. They're just battering rounds which are being used to beat down the people of Ireland, to humiliate them, to make them feel guilty, to make them feel ashamed. Uh, you know, uh, where's your own passion? Where's your mouth? Eh? You know, like this sort of nonsense, you know. Uh, well, to my answer to that, by the way, is well, there's, there's 1.5 mil- billion Africans still over there. Why aren't you getting them here? No, what are you going to do about them? Where's your humanity for them? You know, it's just nonsense. These people are getting away with blue murder because of the corruption of the media, and because people are scared of those uh, swear words, those spell words. If we could just shake that off and just stand up and say, "Enough, stop now." Here's the deal. We're telling you now. This is what's going to happen in our country. Then it would stop. What would happen outside, what would happen as a result of that from, in turn, the exterior master is in other days' work. We have to think about that too. But our primary problem is the treason of our political class. Our, we do not have, as I said a million times, we do not have a mass migration problem. We have a mass treason problem. John Penn. He just spoke, you know, and, and the thing is, is, he's not just talking about his own country. He's talking about the United States, too. You know, you think about that. He's he's talking about Ireland, but it's the same thing here. We don't have a mass migration problem. We have a mass treason problem. Treason. The Palestinians are the biblical Hebrews. Okay. This is actually a very interesting story. Okay, Jews not related to the biblical Hebrews. Jews originated in South Russia. Let's go into this. I need to make this bigger, so give me a second to do this. Oh, wow, and I need to clean my glasses, too, real quick. Hang on. Wow, that's like a leprechaun went up here and gave me fingerprints all over it. There we go. That's better. Okay. Uh, so let's go to this. Here we go. Khazars, Khazar Jews related by blood to Kurds. Israeli scientists have been trying to prove that they are genetically related to the Palestinians. The purpose is to try and justify their claim over the territory. However, instead, the studies show that why their or that their Y chromosome is related to the Kurds in ancient times. The Khazar kingdom was just north of Kurdistan. It was. It is natural that there would be interbreeding between such close neighboring countries like the Jews, the Kurds, have for centuries have been a tribe without a country. The Khazar Jews, the Kurds, are also related to the Turks and the Mongols who long ago conquered both Khazaria and Kurdistan. All are of an uh, Asiatic strain of people. Most importantly, this information adds to the knowledge that the Jews have absolutely no racial or historical claim to the land of Palestine. In truth, it belongs to the Palestinian people. The Jewish Encyclopedia, 1905 edition, volume X, page 283, quotes Dr. Joseph Jacobs at the time, uh, the, the world's foremost authority on Jewish history as stating the question whether the Jews of today are in the main descended uh, are in the main descended from the Jews uh, of the Bible times and from them alone is still undecided. I want to make sure okay I wanted to make sure that there was nothing below that or above that. Uh, new evidence proves that Jews are a race. Before World War II, the Jews admitted openly that they were a race. After the war, they said that they were a religion, which is correct. There are two main branches of the world Jewry. 
There are the Ashkenazi Jews from Russia, Poland, and the Sephardic Jews from Spain. Today's evidence shows that the Ashkenazi, uh, Ashkenazi Kazari, uh, Kazarian once stood in an area marked Georgia, Russia, over centuries interbreeding occurred between the Jews. Uh, Jews originated in Kazaria, an ancient kingdom in South Russia. King Bull of Kazaria ordered the conversion of his people to Judaism in the year 965 AD. He took this action because he was under pressure to either accept the Muslim religion to his south or the Christian faith to his north. Adopting Judaism was a way to preserve the Khazar nation. King Bulan uh, brought some 12,000 Jews into his kingdom to help with the conversion of his people and the building of synagogues, Jewish schools, etc. The Khazar Jews controlled most trade between the nations of the east and the Muslim nations of the south. They became the chief middlemen, business traders of the world. These Russian Khazar Jews today make up 90% of the world Jewry. They constitute most of the Jews who reside in America. The Sephardic Jews of Spain make up the other. Pretty simple. Pretty straight to the point. And it was even in the newspaper. Isn't that funny? Page 58, yeah. Tim Young says... Uh, my son is taking part in a social experiment. He has to wear a Biden 2024 shirt, T-shirt for two weeks and see how people react. So far, he's been spit on, punched, and had a bottle thrown at him. I'm curious what happened when he goes outside. All right. Here we go. This piece of, piece of shit is the reason our country is failing. Lying scumbag. Schumer says the biggest reason Ukraine is losing the war is because the hard right on the Congress has paralyzed the United States from acting. Hmm. Let's see. As the Congress gavels back into session, I also urge Speaker Johnson and House Republicans to snap out of their paralysis and pass the Senate's national security supplemental. The situation in Ukraine is desperate. Speaker Johnson has now sat on his hands for 55 days as the National Security Supplemental has collected dust in the House. That's 55 days of America standing on the sidelines while our friends in Ukraine fight and die on the battlefield with no support. 55 days of our European allies wondering when the U.S. will step up. And with each passing day, Ukraine continues to run out of more ammo, continues to run out of soldiers, and continues to run out of hope that can successfully expel the Russians from their borders. And let's be blunt, the biggest reason Ukraine is losing the war is because the hard right in the Congress has paralyzed the United States from acting. That's it. That's the reason. Speaker Johnson has to decide for himself whether or not he will do the right thing for Ukraine, for America, and for democracy, or if he'll allow MAGA Republicans to hand Vladimir Putin a large victory. I'm confident that if the Speaker puts the Senate's National Security Supplemental on the floor, it will pass. It remains the best, quickest, and most realistic way to get Ukraine the help it needs. So again, there is a lot that the Senate must do in the coming weeks and months, and to get anything done will require bipartisan cooperation. I thank my colleagues for their good work so far in 2024 and look forward to working with all of them to keep delivering for the American people. Now. Yeah, Chuckles, I'm looking forward to the day that you go to prison for being a pedophile. I just try to be patient. Wait for it. Together, we are unstoppable. Mega. No matter where your family comes from, no matter your background in America, anyone can rise. With hard work, devotion, and drive, you can reach any goal and achieve every ambition. We will show that the world, for America, there is a dream, and it is not beyond your reach. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are unbeatable. Because together we are the proud citizens of the United States of America.
you are part of the most exciting and incredible adventure in human history. Americans have still in their spines, grit in their souls, and fire in their hearts. There is no one like us on Earth. We will make America greater than ever before. We can achieve anything. We can achieve anything if we work together. Anything. Did he get it right? Okay, so <laughs> I dare somebody to actually try and do this, okay? I'll pause it periodically just so that you can get the numbers and everything, okay? Say the weird thing. Think of a number between 1 and 10. Okay, think of your number from 1 to 10. Write it down. Okay, here we go. With that number, multiply it by nine. Multiply it times nine. Okay. Got that? Now, if you have a two-digit number, I want you to add those two digits together. Add those two digits together if you have two numbers, which you should, unless you picked like one or two or three or four. Great. With that new number, subtract five. Subtract five. Now with that new number, find the corresponding letter in the alphabet. A is for one, B is for two, C is for three. You're not done yet. Okay. Find the cores corresponding letter. Okay. A is 1, B is 2, and so on. Okay, if you have a letter now, think of a name of a country that begins with that letter. Think of a letter, think of think of a country that begins with that letter. Okay? Are you still with me? Okay, here we go. A country. Got one? With the name of that country, the last letter in that country, think of a name of an animal that begins with that letter. Okay. You got it? The last letter of the country. You got it? Okay. Okay. With the last letter in the name of that animal, think of a color that begins with that letter. So think of a color that goes with that letter. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, here we go. You got one? Seen any orange kangaroos in Denmark lately? Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Rural America is dying, and it's dying much quicker than anybody realizes. The consequences are devastating. Common now. The agriculture. There we go. You may not think that rural America has anything to do with you, but let me explain why it does. You see, small towns like this, like Keys, Oklahoma, are all too common now. The agriculture economy has been hit so hard in this country that all the jobs associated with it are gone. The lumber stores are closed, the grocery stores are gone, the gas stations. What does this mean for you? It means that in agriculture in America, it's gotten so hard because of our politicians selling out the American farmer and rancher that people don't want to fight it anymore. They sell their land, they move to the big cities, and they live out the rest of their days as best they can. 
what does this mean for you? It means that with every producer we lose on the land in this country, it means that a corporation comes in and takes it over. And that if people like Bill Gates control our food supply in America, we lose our freedom. Like the wildfires in Texas and Oklahoma, for example. This devastating ordeal will cause many ranchers to go out of business, lessening the competition for Bill Gates and his lab-grown meat, and setting us on a path to where an elite few control our food supply and force us to eat not real food or bugs or worse. Remember, it's your food, it's your food supply. Follow and like, and I'll explain more about agriculture in our country. Say the yep. weird thing. Think of a number between one and 10. All right. Good morning, all. Have a great day. Everybody romanticizes the good old days. Here's a reality check for you. History 101. They used to use urine tannins, so families used to all pee in a pot, and then once a day it was taken and sold to the tannery. If you had to do this to survive, you were piss poor. But worse than that were the really poor folk who couldn't even afford to buy a pot. They didn't have a pot to piss in and were the lowest of the low. The next time you are washing your hands and complain because the water temperature isn't just how you like it, think about how things used to be. Here are some facts about the 1500s. Most people got married in June because they took their yearly bath in May, and they still smelled pretty good by June. Since they were starting to smell, however, brides carried a bouquet of flowers to hide the body odor. Hence the custom today of carrying a bouquet when getting married. Baths consisted of a big tub filled with hot water. The man of the house had the privilege of the nice clean water, then all the other sons and men, then the women, and finally the children. Last of all, the babies. By then the water was so dirty, you could actually lose someone in it. Hence the saying, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Houses had thatched roofs, thick straw piled high, with no wood underneath. It was the only place for animals to get warm, so all the cats and other small animals, mice, bugs, lived in the roof. When it rained, it became slippery, and sometimes the animals would slip and fall off the roof, resulting in the idiom, it's raining cats and dogs. There was nothing to stop things from falling into the house. This posed a real problem in the bedroom, where bugs and other droppings could mess up your nice clean bed. Therefore, a bed with big posts and a sheet hung over the top, afforded some protection. That's how canopy beds came into existence. The floor was dirt. Only the wealthy had something other than dirt, leading folks to coin the phrase, dirt poor. The wealthy had slate floors that would get slippery in the winter when wet, so they spread thresh, straw on floor to help keep their footing. As the winter wore on, they added more thresh until, when you opened the door, it would all start slipping outside. A piece of wood was placed in the entranceway, subsequently creating a threshold. In those old days, they cooked in the kitchen with a big kettle that always hung over the fire. Every day, they lit the fire and added things to the pot. They ate mostly vegetables and did not get much meat. They would eat the stew for dinner, leaving leftovers in the pot to get cold overnight and then start over the next day. Sometimes stew had food in it that had been there for quite a while, and thus the rhyme, Peas porridge hot, peas porridge cold, peas porridge in the pot nine days old. Sometimes they could obtain pork, which made them feel quite special. When visitors came over, they would hang up their bacon to show off. It was a sign of wealth that a man could bring home the bacon. They would cut off a little to share with guests and would all sit around and chew the fat. Those with money had plates made of pewter. Food with high acid content caused some of the lead to leach onto the food, causing lead poisoning death. This happened most often with tomatoes, so for the next 400 years or so, tomatoes were considered poisonous. Bread was divided according to status. Workers got the burnt bottom of the loaf, the family got the middle, and guests got the top, or the upper crust. Lead cups were used to drink ale or whiskey. The combination would sometimes knock the imbibers out for a couple of days. Someone walking along the road would take them for dead and prepare them for burial. They were laid out on the kitchen table for a couple of days and the family would gather around and eat and drink and wait and see if they would wake up, creating the custom of holding awake. 
England is old and small, and the local folks started running out of places to bury them. So they would dig up coffins and would take the bones to a bone house and reuse the grave. When reopening these coffins, one out of 25 coffins were found to have scratch marks on the inside, and they realized they had been burying people alive, so they would tie a string on the wrist of the corpse, lead it through the coffin, and up through the ground, and tie it to a bell. Someone would have to sit out in the graveyard all night, the graveyard shift, to listen for the bell. Thus, someone could be saved by the bell, or was considered a dead ringer. And that's the truth. Everything has meaning. Everything. All right. Chemtrail biological release spots exposed on April 8th. Here we go. They released biological payloads onto unsuspecting solar eclipse onlookers. That We have the data, radar confirmation, and reports of sickness. The sky April 8th. Take a listen. People were saying that was coming in, and then we went to confirm where the planes actually were on flight tracker that we said would do aerial spraying operations. So we got that information for you. We also seen some strange things come across the sky April 8th. Does it have anything to do with CERN? We're going to look deeper into that for you here today. So this next part of this clip, we're going to go ahead and get you straight into the situation at hand. Um, like we said, the aerial release team was a new plane called the Super Hercules, the C-130J-30. And why was it going to be coming across the sky during the eclipse? We told you in past videos that Hercules' birth was associated with a solar eclipse symbolizing the temporary darkening of the sun. And as you look right here on camera, this was the temporary darkening of the sun that happened. And so this was supposedly in Niagara area, and you can see it all happened in front of your eyes. But check this out. This is what was interesting. When I looked for the information on the C, the Hercules plane, the C-130J-30, I looked on the leak that supposedly came out, not from my source, because originally I told you he said that it was going to be at the Homeland Security meeting, intel of a biological attack. This was the uh, information that Doug and Stacy had read. And on one part, I found it was super highly accurate. When they warned about it, April 8th, they said this, uh, begin appearing seven to 10 days after infection, 30 days, and we heard it already. People in the path of totality should not go outside. Bacterial payload will lose effectiveness within six hours post deployment. Not sure if that's 100% true or not. Half life of powder will vary on humidity and temperature. The starting point is Canada. The end point is Mexico. So check it out. They said the starting point is Canada. And what I did is I instantly went and I looked. But the first thing that prompted me to look was this comment right here that said C-130J-30 Hercules, as described, is flying south for the first pass currently south of Ottawa. But as US 1223 posted, sounds legitimate so far. Yikes. So I then go and pull out the radar. And let me show you exactly when I made the screenshot of this image. It was on today, 9.29 a.m., which they said local time, 9.30. I checked the radar and literally at the time it's coming from Canada into New York. The aerial spraying plane that does biological spraying. We're not just talking about the chemtrails that everybody's seeing today because the powder was supposed to be invisible. So you wouldn't be able to see it if it was coming from those specific planes. And then I did a further look to see what other places that these planes was at. And you can see it was some in Texas, Arkansas. It looks like they're going towards the path of the solar eclipse. And then you got some random ones that's over in Florida and then one in South Carolina. But 100% on point, exactly where it was coming from. People starting to say they're getting sick. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to look into the bigger part that a lot of people have been basically discussing. I mean, sure, you've looked up and you've seen the spraying. Here's Richard from Boston. 
confirming how the spraying was look over in Missouri. A lot of other people confirming how the spraying was looking. Here's a report from Doug and Stacy showing the sky. But the stuff that was sprayed that was biological is supposedly invisible. So this is probably, obviously this lowers our immunity, the chemical spraying. That's why they probably have to do that the same exact day because it's another extension to how you're going to be affected later. Let's look into the sickness part though. I wanna read some of the comments here, what you're saying about how you felt today and how everything is going. We also seen something that looks like an entity in the atmosphere. That could be due to the CERN and all the rituals that's happening and everything else. Oh, it was another one I didn't tell y'all about because I just found out today that they were they were gonna deploy this balloon that's gonna release payloads and it's already probably released it by now. But guess what the name of the um guess what the name of the the people who's releasing the balloon is? The the name of it is Devil Dragon. NEBP balloon team. And remember, we just told you it was the year of the dragon. They had the devil comet coming after 70 years. All this stuff leading up into the same scenario that sounds like it's been broken down into little pieces to make you get little information. But again, a lot of people reporting they're already sick and stuff like this. This is really early to be reporting stuff like this. However, we told you the reason why they need to release the payload during the eclipse was because it's easier to get away with the scenario during the eclipse because now the experts all said that there's no such thing as this solar eclipse sickness, but people on the other hand are saying different things. So check this out right here. It's, uh, Rob says, so I've been dizzy and felt like I have motion sickness. And he goes and researched something up and then all of a sudden is, is related to the eclipse, even though the experts say the eclipse has no effect on you. Another person said they were uh, throwing up and sick. And so, again, moving on into this, like we said, they had everybody prepared, all the hospitals. And what you've been seeing in the news recently, we wanted to take you back to when I originally told you about the biological attack and we looked at the FBI in the hospitals in Colorado. And I told you that the insider told us Ebola was something they were looking at, the brain wasting disease. But what you've been seeing coming out recently is not that. However, let's go back to that drill really quick. I know now why the reason for the bioterrorism drill in Colorado is happening. And it's because that was the central hub for the launching phase of Ebola. That's going to be the central ground where the launching phase of Ebola is happening. The spreading of chemicals and biological material right now is for the second wave for the next version of the pandemic. Check this out, though, right here when I show you this on screen. Uh, the first live Ebola vaccine was taken in Colorado, Denver, Colorado. So it makes sense why they did that. Another strange thing is if you look up on Google search, if you just look up CERN, you can see that the most highlighted areas is right along totality. And predictive programming in the movie came out. CERN today released this on their page. They said, can you guess what this is? Hint, it has absolutely nothing to do with the sofon in the three body problem which was a movie that uh, you know, on Netflix with the three body problem. And they said we're bugs. They had this other species coming to, and it was about a solar eclipse. They had these other species coming to colonize them, just like they're trying to interact with all oh, their fake Messiah. And then they're saying the rise, the sun, and this war that they're having right now, they said we're bugs. And then they spray us on this day. CERN actually comes out and then just like the predictive programming said in three body system, I want you to see this thing really quick. I think I had a video for what this was that how, let's see if I can pull it up for you real quick. And uh, if you don't know what the three body problem is on Netflix, it's really some predictive program is crazy. Here's what CERN released today. In the photon that they're talking about, not even showing the video. It's not showing the video right now. So again, 
We'll have to come back and show that. It just looks like that thing that you're seeing. The photon was something that was surveilling everybody from a distance. The photon was surveilling them. And basically, it was not any technology that we had around here that was known. All right, so I need you to check this out right here. So I'm going to put audio on and the people was looking up at the sky. And uh, we told you how CERN was opening portals and how they're shooting frequencies up. This is more likely why the first part of the sickness is happening, not because the payload automatically just made everybody sick, because that's going to play out over time. And then we're going to see more stuff happen. Uh, check this out, though. This was today. I got the date on the video. You can look up something goes across the sky, something that looks like some type of being or something like that, a dark figure. You can check this out real quick. Bruh. Look, there's something flying through the air. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Yo, what the fuck? Aliens! Aliens! Yo. Look, it's so cool. What's that? What's that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? I looked at that video like five, six, seven times, and it's 100% not CGI. I've looked at it over and over, and I've seen so many CGI videos, and that was not. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Some people said they're already feeling congested. The best thing we can do is start to build up our immunity. Uh, I'm not giving you any type of health information, but I'm just saying it's only it's, it's logical to build up your immunity. Doctors say to do that all the time. So here's the here's the next scenario that they're pulling us into. The next scenario, as we already know, they already said prepare their emergency rooms. Of course, that's what they're doing right now. But what else we have in the other back pocket is whole bird flu scenario which basically they had already done this in february they said revealed u.s is collaborating with chinese scientists to make bird flu strains more infectious and deadly as part of a one million project so they've came out recently just starting to pull this again so remember where this goes right remember where all this goes whatever they've deployed upon populations right now is exactly how this is going to go so you can already see the pandemic phase setting up like we said this is the next phases we're about to be taken into uh strange letters are also coming out of uh, people seeing in their insurance companies also people seeing stuff in like airbnb updates Airbnb updates are saying like uh, major disruptive events policy will apply to all trips and experiences taking place on or after june 6 2024 regardless of when they are booked. Foreseeable weather events at reservation location explicitly eligible for coverage if they result in another covered event, such as government travel restriction or large scale utility outage. Government travel restrictions, what do you think that is? That's because there's a common pandemic uh, right on the time points that we were already talking about. So they've already pretty much upgraded saying that this was going to be something that could be disrupted thing they already been saying that people's been getting doctor Ben tapper put out an insurance policy thing that's now saying your policy will include a war exclusion your commercial inland marine coverage will include a nuclear biological chemical and radiological hazards exclusion this was uh in a cincinnati insurance company sending this out and that looks very interesting what do you think you're talking about there some people say well they're preparing for the war to come. I think it's preparing for the actual event of a pandemic to come. So they say, uh, I heard a few people smear, smell weird weird smells, can't even talk right now. What smells did people uh, smell? Was a warning, tomorrow I says, uh, repent, definitely. Uh, huge gazing over Florida. Somebody says, it was clear here in Memphis, we had like 98%. Somebody says, I'm gonna miss eclipse day. You probably already missed it. I mean, it's pretty much on your time zone. But check it out. What, what's going to happen next? It's not over with yet. Because now that we've hit this period, the next period is where they go into the phases of their next part of the ritual. Because it just happened now. Days of preparation, occult significance, April 19th through May 1st. April 19th, the first day, the 13th day of the satanic ritual, they relating to fire, the fire god, Bill or Moloch, Nimrod, the sun, god, also known as the Roman god, Saturn, Satan, devil. 
This day is a major human sacrifice day demanding the fire sacrifice, the emphasis on children. This day is one of the most important human sacrifice days. As such, had some very important historic events occur on this day. So, again, we need to watch. Like, basically, all children need to be watched. All kids you have need to be watched. And if you can be alerted of that, and just the disappearance, just women in general, just men trying to be, like, right there for them, making sure this day, like, you don't have people disappear, it's going to be important. Because, obviously, if you go back to all the rituals during the eclipses, the Mayans, all this other stuff, they were doing this stuff, okay? It was, like, rituals happening all the time, specifically around these events, This is nothing but a translation over the past happening here again. So so I says, keep your kids home. So I says, also, rains, I don't think that was the moon. I want to see if it was the moon. Yeah, that's another thing my woman been saying. She said she don't think it's the moon. I seen seen an image come out where somebody showed this thing that looks like it it was the moon, but I'm not sure if it was a reflection. So I don't even want to put the uh, image out. So I don't know 100% if it was the moon or if it was just something else up there in the sky. But however, what we're going to be watching next coming days is we're going to tie everything in that we're going to be seeing over these next coming days, which we want to stick around for. And we're also going to be looking deeper into how they're going to start translating all of this, take people's attention away from it, and then start to roll out everything in the media that we said that they're going to start rolling out which is the pandemic phase, which is the new sickness and old people are showing up to emergency rooms. This week alone, they want you to be stuck in the mindset that the eclipse did nothing to nobody. Nothing happened. And then post that, uh, give it a couple more weeks. We're going to start seeing how they roll it all out because this was the scenario that they planned for 100 percent. So now that you know that you can take the information, you can share it out. If you missed the beginning part, I showed exactly where the planes came in and deployed at. If you missed that, you got to go back and see that. Get this out to everybody you can far and wide and start building up your immunity, building up the spirituality. I was doing the prayer last night, making sure we can go into this new phase, this new beginning with the power and energy we need as a community, because this is what we have to do. Thank you all for tuning in. If you missed all the other videos, you can check them out on the left-hand side, and a link will be below to donate to Help JW TV. Appreciate you. All right. So that was a very interesting report by that young man. Very interesting. All right, here's Jesse Waters. The FBI has been busted lying about crime statistics. Crime is everywhere. Why are they saying crime is down? Here we go. The Biden administration's a mirage. We're paying more for everything, but they tell us inflation's down. They tell us the economy's great, but the jobs go to migrants. Biden's flying migrants straight into our airport so they can tell us border crossings are down. And now they say there's no crime wave. But do you feel safe? Warning, the videos we're about to show you are graphic. In Arizona, cops were called to a hotel because a guy was swinging around a samurai sword. So, so, so what are you doing? I'm practicing my way with the katana so I can become better at combat. Are you not able to do that in, in the comfort of your room? Yeah, leave it there, dude. Don't can do it. it down, I'm telling man. you right now. Get down. Don't, don't. In L.A., a guy was popped for DUI. Cops brought him to the hospital, and then he started biting. Stop trying to bite me. That was your problem. Help me! I am! Trying to fight me. Watch your watch your hand. Watch your hand. Help me, help me, please! Ah! 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 Move! Ryan, relax! Ryan, relax! Watch out, Eddie. Ryan, relax. Relax. And in New York, cops were responding to an assault in an apartment building. When they tried arresting the suspect, he got his gun and shot two officers.
So if crime's everywhere, why do they say crime's down? A new report from the FBI shows that there was a 13% decline in murder. Despite what the data shows, which we've been talking about, the fact that crime is going down in most places is not registering with the public. I can safely walk my dog mm -hmm. to the Capitol today in a way that you couldn't do uh, when, uh, when we all got here. I'm glad Pete can walk his dog, but why should we believe the FBI? Well, turns out we shouldn't. The Washington Examiner did some digging and discovered the FBI has been cooking the books. Did you know about half the country doesn't send their crime statistics to the FBI? So the FBI just estimates the number of crimes and then they estimate in the wrong direction. Murders are actually up 23% across 70 cities since 2019. In Milwaukee, the FBI reported a 13% drop in robberies but Milwaukee police reported a 7% increase. The Biden administration is using Enron-style accounting to cook the books on everything from crime to the border to the economy. And then the media reporters, they just regurgitate the propaganda and they wonder why the country's soured. We don't trust them and Trump's winning. Paul Morrow is an attorney and former NYPD inspector. So... How egregious is this FBI crime book cooking? Looks pretty bad. I mean, you only have about 63% of the country that's even covered by these numbers. And what the media does is they generally find some salient point that works for them. They hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. You and I know how this works, right? It goes out to all the Biden proxies and they lead with that story and they hope that everybody's eyes glaze over and numbers are numbers, nobody really cares. The truth of the matter though is I actually think this is good for the right and good for Donald Trump. Why? Because nobody believes it. And as they continue to hammer this point, people know what they see and hear. And the reality is, as you point out, since 2019, we are up. If you take, for instance, the murder number, which generally the analysts like to use as the metric, we are up at our highest number for last year in aggregate murder numbers since 1996. Wow. And that's because 1996 is no those policing really began to take hold. We're up about 12% since Joe Biden took office. Now, look, people point to COVID. 
the over-under from that is gone, all right? We're in a post-COVID era now. We have to deal with reality as it is on the ground. New York City, similar metric going on, and Alvin Bragg's jurisdiction and the other uh, prosecutors were up a full third in the major felonies since 2019. That's reality. People know it, and they're not buying the storyline. I mean, it's good politically for Republicans. It's bad for the country. Do you think that the media knows what they're doing? Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think that, you know, there's enough counter reporting going out there so that they know, well, look, if we. Yeah, it's up look now. At what's it's, I, I got the rest of that video plan. I got about uh, 30 seconds until I got to switch to the next so one. So let's just take what we know so, works for us. Yeah. And we're going to go with so that. It's all a storyline with them. And the video, I'll tell, I'll, that's I'll the tell key you when. point. And you guys went to it. These days, everything is televised. It's very hard to obfuscate that kind of reality. Yeah, that is some really graphic footage. Glad we did the warning. Unbelievable bravery okay. from all, right. all of these officers. Okay. All right, bye. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, computer overheated. Little one, too. Both of them went down at the exact same time. Kind of weird. All right. What really happened yesterday is from Paul's Corner. So you don't think anything happened crazy during the eclipse today? Well, are you sure you were paying attention? Because I captured something crazy. This is the sun. That's a lens flare. So you tell me what that is. It's not a lens flare. And I've been saying for a while that the sun we see is just a projection from the sun in the firmament. And not only did I catch it, but my friend Brandon Thomas, who has the Expanding Reality podcast, used a solar filter and not only caught one, but he caught who? And you guys might not be Bible believers, and that's okay, because I wasn't either, until I realized we didn't live on a globe. But if you look at what the Bible says, it talks about the sun being in the firmament. And not only that, but there being layers of the firmament. So if the sun was in the firmament, maybe we are seeing the reflections in the different layers of the firmament, where usually we just see the projection right here. And usually we can never see that reflection because the sun is so bright that it washes everything out. But when it's partially eclipsed, as seen by the lens flare, we see. And if you're an intellectually honest person and you see things like this that don't make sense in the heliocentric model, you really need to ask yourself, do I continue to believe what I've always believed or should I seek truth? Truth that might just set you free and let you know that we're in a place that was created just for us. And the beautiful thing is the choice is yours. You can stay in your beliefs because it's comfortable. It's comfy. It's a cozy little blanket. Or you can take the hard road and seek truth and true knowledge. But as always, this is just my opinion. You know, I'm just a satire account purely for entertainment purposes. And I have to give credit where credit is due. David Weiss, the man, the man who created this app, was the first person to ever show me that the sun we see might just be a projection from the source inside the firmament. So go download his app. It's a wealth of information. Right. Hang on one second. We can do videos here um, again. Use my code FITFLAT when you sign up. And have a good day. Very interesting, huh? You know, it's uh, that's the... Uh, it's kind of crazy how uh, all that stuff is coming out like that. This is that flying ship. You see it there? Boom. It's like there's a.
of the computer's resources. Hey guys, all right, I'm back again. All right, listen, we're we're three and a half minutes or three hours and fifteen minutes into this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing down um, and try and get uh, another uh, setup done, and I'll I'll be back in a couple of hours. Um, but this is uh, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, that uh, both compute both computers have gone down from overheating. I'm getting this exorbitant amount of, um, of traffic packages uh, from YouTube and from X Bolt. Uh, these packets are coming in faster than I've ever seen before, um, and it appears that uh, that they don't want me to stream. Um, and uh, it's uh, I'm going to uh, shut this computer down and give it a chance to for a good cool down, and I'll try and come back on in a couple of hours. Um, and seating, uh, seeing uh, what the heck's going on. Uh, all right. So with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys uh, let you guys go for now, and we will be I'll be back with you in uh, in just a little while. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. Peace.